Good evening and welcome to the Fallon Conservation Commission meeting of August 26, 2015. Um, anyone with cell phones or electronic devices, please silence them. If you're here to speak on any one of the applications, we encourage you to do so. We just ask that you take the podium and give us your name for the recording secretary and then have at it. Um, first up on the agenda tonight is the minutes from the July 29th, 2015 meeting, oh, which we did. Oh, and the first part of the next minute that we voted. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. That's my fault. I didn't cross it off last week. It says she brought it back over. Okay. So let's go to August 12th, 2015. Betsy. Um, a, a couple of comments. Susan? For absent, you can take John Poloni off because he's not a member anymore. So that's from now on. So we'll get that in. That's in. On page um, five, this was a discussion about the koi pond. Okay. And uh, towards the end, I say something about if anything. If anything's disturbed, we need to know. And then Mike said, I'm happy with what you're proposing. He didn't, I don't think he understood my point, which was that if the koi pond was not legally put there, they would have to give us more mitigation for what they were proposing. And so I have that written down okay. here. And then the last uh, sentence, Mr. Lazardi, you have, are you asking for a continuance? It's, I am asking for a continuance. He asked for a continuance. And then on the last page, page 11, um, where I'm talking other business and we're applying for a grant, it's from U.S. Fish and Wildlife, not Mass Fish and Wildlife. And there's another grant from NOAA, N-O-A-A, that will help us get even closer to the end. And then the question mark beetles are loose striped beetles. So I have all that written here. Okay. I think you have some, don't you hear? Yes, Mr. Chair, I have a few other things. Um, Very. So I can pass them in as well. I think they're not really matters of substance, but things like koi is K-O-I. <laughs> so. Good, because I have it C-O-I. I have it C-O-I. <laughs> you're, you're absolutely right, it is K-O-I. <laughs> so I move that with these does anybody else have anything? Yeah. Any, other, well, any other questions or changes on the minutes for August 12th? So I move we accept them. Second. It's yeah. Betsy and, and Mike. All those in favor accepting the August 12th minutes, say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. Extension, unanimous, so moved. Next up, request for continuance under determination of applicability. Arthur Gilbert, 247 Edgewater Drive, West, East Falmouth, Mass., for permission to construct a second story addition to an existing single family home with no changes in the footprint or alteration on the ground. Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman, the applicant is requesting a continuance until September 16th. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Question. Question. Oh, sorry about that. Is there Go a ahead. reason? Okay, fair enough. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions before I call for the vote here? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Abstentions, unanimous, so moved. Uh, second request for continuance is Antoinette Steinecker, 24 Maker Lane, West Falmouth, Mass., for permission to fill and grade the area around the northeast corner of the house to bring the ground elevation to 15 feet, disturbed areas to be landscaped. Jen. So moved. Second. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions you or comments? You anticipated my question. Yeah, I, mo I moved it. I seconded. Or vice versa. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Mari and, and Betsy, okay. 
I'll call for the vote then. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Abstentions, unanimous, so moved. Next up is a request for continuance under a notice of intent. Peter and Louise Donovan, 41 Hamlin Point Road, Wachoit, Mass, for permission to raise, R-A-Z-E, and reconstruct an existing deck, install a new deck with stairs, covered porch, construct a deck with spa, rinse station, remove three trees, add gravel, parking space, install native mitigation plantings, dry wells, and associated clearing, excavating, grading, and landscaping. Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman, the applicant is requesting Second. Maury and Betsy, comments or questions on the board? Public? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Abstentions, unanimous, so moved. Okay, request for determination of applicability. This is the lesser of the two applications. What you want to hear is a negative determination on these. And then it means you can go along with your project. You hear a positive, probably need more information, or you have to go to the next level. Mm -hmm. Gail Kiley, 67, Showwood Drive, East Falmouth, Mass, for permission to pump, fill, and abandon the existing cesspool, install a new Title V sewage disposal system, remove existing land landing, and construct new deck with stairs, rebuild the existing walkway, restore the gravel driveway, and regrade loam and seed disturbed areas. Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, staff has reviewed the project. We are recommending a negative two under the state and bylaw with the resource area boundaries not confirmed. So moved. Second. Mike and Courtney, questions or comments from the board? Questions or comments from the public? Well, hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Abstentions, unanimous, so moved. Uh, next up is Phil and Susan Warren, 132 Citus Pond Road, Falmouth, Mass, for permission to construct and maintain an addition and porch with a footprint of the existing solarium and deck within the footprint of the existing solarium and deck. Install stone steps, relocate stone steppers, install dry wells, and to remove a uh, portion of the paved walkway. Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman, staff has reviewed the project So move. Second. So we've got Courtney, Betsy, questions or comments <coughs> from the board? Questions or comments from the public? We'll call for the vote. Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Abstentions, unanimous, so move. Uh, the next two were continued until, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, request for an, a hearing under a notice of intent. All hearings of the Falmouth Conservation Commission are held simultaneously under the authority of the Massachusetts Wetland Protection Act and the Falmouth Wetlands Bylaw. Although a single decision of the commission is issued, it represents a separate decision under each authority. All right. So first up is Will William Drynan. 103 Charles River Road, Wachoit, Mass, for permission to remove pavement in the existing shed and to construct an attached garage, install dry well, negative, um, yeah, na native mitigation plantings, and associated clearing, excavating, grading, and landscaping. Jennifer. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'll hold any of my comments or questions until after Mr. Joel's presentation. Good evening, Mr. Doyle. Good evening, John Doyle, for the record. Uh, I put this, I, I, I represent Bill Drynan. Uh, he's also a friend of mine, he's sitting here. I put together this application for him and did a survey out there and drew this plan. Uh, this property is located on the Sea Pit Peninsula, on the west side of the peninsula, Charles River Road, 103 Charles River Road. Uh, it obviously fronts on the Charles River. Uh, this lot is about just under 10,000 square feet, I think it's 973, 9730. Um, there is a house on the lot now, three bedroom house here. 
Uh, the road going by Charles River Road is stirred. The driveway that's existing is paved. Uh, there's a dock that goes out into the, the uh, river here. And uh, it is a licensed dock. I think I put the license number on there. Um, this project would fall within the buffer to a number of different protected resources. I think I listed on the application uh, land under an estuary, uh, banks of an estuary, coastal bank, land subject to uh, coastal flooding and salt marsh. Maybe another one that I listed there too. Uh, what we propose to do is build an attached garage on the existing house. Um, we've, this is our third rendition of this garage. We've been going through this for about a year with a lot of your gore uh, to get the right definition for attaching the garage and not having it be a, a separate uh, accessory building, something that would be accept acceptable to him. Uh, obviously, this will be the estuary out here on the west side. Uh, there is a salt marsh in here. If you were out there, you saw stakes that I placed on the, on the, the landward edge of the salt marsh. Uh, down to the south end of the bulkhead, there is probably one or two elder plants between the bulkhead and the beginning of the salt marsh. But to play it safe, I, I drew the 100-foot the buffer from the bulkhead line. So there might be a little bit of elder in there between the bulkhead and the beginning of the salt marsh. Uh, the bank is steepest where the stairs go down to the dock um, in front of the house or, or seaward of the house. It's, that slope is about one and a half to one there. As you bend around to the south, the, the slope gets to about three to one. It really never gets to like one and four. Um, what, you sh what you see here, this red line, is what I've determined to be the top of the coastal bank and uh, coincides with the, the FEMA 100-year frequency flood line. Um, I have drawn a line 100 feet from the salt marsh, which is this red line that goes through, well, probably two-thirds through the proposed garage. Uh, that would be the zone A to the salt marsh. Uh, then I have also drawn a line 75 feet from the top of the coastal bank. The way I determined that was that I looked at 1018.52F where it calls for a 75 foot buffer f for the A zone for banks of an estuary. We propose also to remove two, one of the two sheds on the property and we're going to be removing some of the pavement. So when we put this all together, we need to mitigate this action by putting these three planting areas on the seaward side of the house. Um, I think that in the application, I placed a copy of the design of that little plantings area with a couple of footpaths that Bill put together. In, a, in addition to that, there is a computation table down in this corner of the plan shows that we are intending to build a 400 square foot garage but we are also removing the shed that exists there now and we're removing quite a bit of the pavement that's there now under where the garage is going to be so that when you take the land we're going to develop and you remove the shed in that pavement area within the A zone to the salt marsh, we come up with a net area, which is here on this calculation board. I can't read it from here, but it's, it's here and it's in the narrative as well. Then when I go out to the, the top of the coastal bank and go to the A zone from there, I find that when I take the new development that is probably the landward third of the garage and the removal of the pavement in that area and the removal of the shed and then this little yellow area in here which is paved now it's quite a wide drive we're going to cut it down so that it just has a two car capacity yeah. that we have really negative development 
So there should be no need for mitigation plannings from that zone A from the top of the coastal bank or the bank of the estuary. Uh, we also plan to put some dry wells in to collect the, uh, the downspouts from the proposed garage. The current dwelling goes into uh, downspouts and into dry wells. The septic tank is shown in front of the house and the leach field is under the front grass lawn there. I, I think that's pretty much it, but uh, I, I will note that this is a footpath going down to the, to the pond that uh, I would say the association all has rights to, or anybody who owns lots within that subdivision that fronts on those roads probably has a right to, and it looks like it's, it's getting community use. That's pretty much our proposal, but uh, if, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them, or Bill would as well. Jim. No questions. Lori? The only thing that I would um, like to put when we have deliberation is um, just to make sure the tree that's right by the limit of work is just protected maybe with an um, orange uh, construction fence. Can and that's you it. Tell me where um, the one that's uh, right where it's 12 foot off the existing okay. with the proposed garage. Okay. There's an oak tree right. just so that it gets protected. But that would be in the water. Mike? There is a, uh, a deck on the west and north side that's not shown on your plan. And we need the datum of the benchmark. You show the benchmark, but you don't say what it's referenced to. Well, to answer your question on the benchmark, the, I ran from a benchmark on that uh, the bridge down there, the Charles River Bridge, it's a state benchmark. We and get it, several quotes several benchmarks floating out just to know for you to tie down which one it is. Yeah, it's a NAV 88. There I you go. Put it on the plan. There you go. Good, Mike? I'm good. Jamie? Um, I'm curious why there's a path between the mitigation areas two and three. Or is that a footpath? Or why is there a break? There's a break that, Bill, can you explain? Oh, are we talking about um, yep. the So you're going to have to go to the microphone, oh, please. Just give us your name for the record. Hi. Uh, my name is Bill Dryden, and, and the plan with the mitigation is to put in the indigenous plants, and between them we were going to put a walkway so we could put in bird houses and bird baths as well as feeders with the ultimate goal to become actually a registered wildlife sanctuary with the state. So he's talking about... This one is obviously going to remain because that's obvious. Yep. You're talking about this one here. Yeah. Two and three. I mean, it, it seems like you have some arrow. erosion there, so it's like it'd be a good place to have it continuous. Just a comment. It, it doesn't. I mean, it doesn't have to be there. The point of it would be to be able to walk and clean the birdhouses sure. and things like that, and feed. You know, fill up the bird feeders. There's a conservation wildflower yeah. mix down there, yeah. and it'd be fine. You can still walk around it and everything. Yeah, Jamie, um, like, well, they showed the bird bath here. Okay. okay, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. Mary, thank you. Um, in, addition, in addition to the, um, the deck that Mike mentioned, I think your plan needs an, an indication of the north direction. There's no arrow on the plan anywhere. Sure. Yeah, I can see. Off. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, that's it. I have no comments on the project. I, I just say to Mr. Doyle, I, I, I calculate things a little bit differently than you do. A zone is A zone. So I, I calculate the additional amount that's in any A zone. But it's fine. It's fine the way you did it. I called Jen. I said, I don't understand how we did these calculations. But then she explained to me how you did it. It's fine. Okay. It's just two ways to to arrive at the same answer. In fact, I think she's I, I had to go to check them off. I was like, 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's two two ways to do the arithmetic part problem. Okay. Either one is fine. <laughs> so John, if you could just give me a revised plan with that additional data and that um, a, a note on the data, we can close this area and you can just provide that to me. Hey, hang on, one more thing. Oh, one more. And while we're doing a, a dry well detail. Oh, in a dry well detail, John. In honor of our uh, former chair. <laughs> and then you'll probably have a special condition of a construction front around that 10 inch oak near the corner of the garage so it doesn't do damage. And just to stabilize the planting area between two and three, just kind of a wildflower mix. It'll be nice. Well, to be honest with you, we're going to hope you would come over and work with us again yes. before we lay it all out. Absolutely. We'd be happy to. Um, Betsy, one more thing. You wanted to add a tree? Oh, yeah. Tree. Yeah. What, part of our regulation is for every thousand square feet. Well, we're not, we're well, not up to that threshold, but I guess it's even if you're. Well, from zero to a thousand is one tree. Oh, so when I was at home, I, I owed you a tree before I even walked in. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Okay. What, well, what type of a tree are you looking for? Because we, we don't have a problem. You just. I mean, talk with Jen. Yeah. Talk, talk with the staff. Yeah. I mean, yeah. my, my fiance and her mother, they're, they're working into nature and conservation, yeah. so whatever you want. A tree out. that the birds will like. That's the only tree they put up. That's all right. <laughs> they want very, very plants for the birds. So. Yeah, that's great. <clears throat> and Courtney has a question. Right. Too. Yeah, so the question is, do we have enough information to close it? Yes. So you, we don't need to continue this? For right. a submitted plan, no. I, I just want to make sure make we're consistent on the, how yeah. we deal with this. Yeah. I don't mean I don't want to delay his project, but I just want to make sure we're all comfortable with that. If everybody here is comfortable, I'm comfortable. Yeah. 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 If I was not comfortable, I would be the right. first one to let you know. I I'll know you would, Jen. I'll make a motion to close the hearing and take it under advisement. Second. Is that Mary? It was. It was Mary. Uh, Betsy made the motion. Mary on the second. Um, any other questions from the board members? Any other comments, questions from the public? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Abstentions, unanimous, so moved, so. John, give me that plan by sometime next week. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much, folks. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Good luck on your project. Thank you very much. Looks good. Thanks. Okay, next up is Brian Murphy, 101 Waterside Drive, North Falmouth, for permission to raise, R-A-Z-E, the existing house and construct a new single-family house with an attached garage, deck, dining area on piers, <clears throat> install a driveway and associated clearing, excavating, grading, and landscaping. Jen. Um, yeah, Mr. Chairman, I'll say that Comments or questions until after Barbara's presentation. Good evening, Barbara. Good evening. Uh, Barbara Frappier with Warwick and Associates. Uh, this is a very um, simple project. We, the only resource area is uh, an AE flood zone. The majority of the uh, house is in that flood zone. And um, the plan is to tear down the existing house, construct a new house, and it will be built to all applicable FEMA and building code standards relative to the seller. Uh, the first floor it will be the one foot above the base flood elevation as required in your regulations. And the reason I know that you sort of had a little lilt in your voice when you said the dining area on piers, in order to be compliant with the uh, Board of Health regulations for setbacks for foundations to existing leaching areas, um, we had to put that portion on piers. So we are compliant with Board of Health regulations in Title V and the existing septic system has a past inspection. There's no increase in flow. That's it. That's it. Jim? No questions. We'll stop down here. Jamie. Um, I don't have any questions. Thank you. Mary? I don't really have any questions. I was just wondering, looking at the plan, and then more so when I went and saw the staking at the site, whether you want to Give yourself a little more room by the, the limit of limit. work. Yeah, what would it seemed the, really tight when I saw mm -hmm. it. In the it, it is. We just want to keep any um, 
anything from going into the wooded area or some, you know, cowboy backhoe driver from plowing through the trees. So it's more. Yeah, that, I was wondering if that. Was, the leaching field yeah. will have to cover that with mats and everything. Yeah. But um, you know, we can. We're a little flexible with that. It's not like I'm protecting a buffer. Okay. As long as you know what you need to do. Right? Yes. You good, Mary? That's all set. That's it. No questions. Thanks. Mike. I'm sorry to see the coolest gazebo in Falmouth disappear. <laughs> maybe, maybe you could have it. <laughs> no other questions? Laurie. Um, I just had two. Um, you don't show the, t is, is that the tank, the S? Yes. Okay. So that is going to be protected. Yes. Yeah. The leach field yeah. is outside the limit of work. The builder doesn't want to replace the septic system. No, I don't think he would. And then the only other thing is it's North Falmouth, not Falmouth. Well, so. when you send it to the state, they don't oh, like you to put the village on. Oh, really? Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Sorry. I know it's North Falmouth. Okay. Just... That's all. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Good. No questions. Any questions or comments from the public? If you go to the podium, thank you. Okay. Hi, I'm Jane Shea. I'm a better. Uh, just wondering if any trees are coming down in the backyard. Oh, no. no. It's all in the existing see. developed area. Okay. Did you see, did you see what okay. I have? Perhaps that might help. Okay. I'll, I'll give you one, too. Okay, you know. thanks. You good with the name, uh, Susan? Mm -hmm. You all set with that? Okay. Thank you. I may, I may move to close the hearing and take it under advisement. Second. Second. Oof. A lot of there. Yeah, I'm going to give it to Maury and Courtney. Maury on the motion, Courtney on the second. Any I don't other questions? Hmm? I don't feel flighted. I, I do. <laughs> You've had plenty tonight. Any other comments or questions from the boys before we vote here? Any other comments or questions from the public? You're all set? Yeah. Okay. Then I'll call for the vote. Um, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. Extensions unanimous so <coughs> move. Thank you very much. Good luck. Mm -hmm. Next up is Peter and Louise Donovan, 41. Oh, they continue. Okay, skip that one. Continue the 16th. Uh, the next one is OCW Retail Falmouth LLC, 137 T Ticket Highway, Falmouth, Mass. For permission to repair and maintain. Bituminous. Bituminous. Sorry about that. Bituminous concrete burn. Remove the existing paved waterway and reconstruct with stone aligned swales. Install native restoration plantings and the associated clearing, excavating, grading, and landscaping. I guess I can believe I'm up on that. Jen. Yes, I'll save any of my comments. Mr. McGrath. Mr. McGrath, good evening. Thank you. My name is Michael McGrath. I'm a professional engineer and a registered land surveyor. We were engaged by OCW Retail, uh, Falmouth LLC, the owner of the Falmouth Mall. And I'm sorry. And what happened is, if you, sh if you go over the sheet too, I'm sorry, someone else put these together and this should have been on the top. Um, during the snowstorms of last winter, um, one of the contractors that was plowing snow, there was, during one of the thaws, there got to be a big puddle. So he basically took a small machine and made an entrance into the woods. And unfortunately, they uh, disturbed some wetlands. Um, this is located at a corner of the mall. Uh, for the people who have been here a long time, there used to be a, uh, a little booth that you could get your film developed. 
So we might. Do you want the PowerPoint presentation for this no, one? No, I do not. Yeah, okay, I didn't think so. So uh, the bottom line is what I've done is I've got a code copy for everyone else. Uh, you drive down from Worcester Court and the mall's in front of you. If you were to turn right, there used to be a kiosk or a Kodak. Um, I remember going mm -hmm. right something. Mm -hmm. So there's a little indentation in the pavement, and what happened is the contractor um, basically uh, uh, disturbs the weapons. So we filed a notice of intent after uh, talking to your staff about fixing it. If you've been to the site, um, there's some hay bales right here that we'll put in immediately. Then um, we have found a plan that shows it being revegetated with uh, wetland species because right now, if you've been there, there's a lot of plants and I would say uh, half of them are not wetland plants. So um, there was always a, a drainage structure there and the point of bringing bringing you the other colored plan was in 1986. That was considered upland. And uh, we actually dug out a large area in 1986, and it was called a proposed vegetative recharge area. Uh, that was then, and this is today, uh, since 1986. Uh, the water table has come up at least four inches, not counting the additional elevation it must be up because the Gulf Stream has stacked water up against the New England coast and mean high water seems to be up full, about five inches taller. So no matter what, this is a vegetated wetland. It, this drainage system doesn't qualify for the exemption that's now in the act in case you do create a wetland. So we're here to restore it. And since there's always been a drainage system there, and if you have gone to the site and you look down, especially in this area, you can see that there is a pavement. Uh, so what we're proposing to do is we're going to put a berm all the way through to control and, and, uh, and concentrate it here. There's going to be a proposed waterway and then a proposed stone path. And then in this area, which it's hard to see right now because the vegetation is up to here, we show uh, planting uh, plants that are a, 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 a group that we've gone over, I believe, with the staff. And so this is to fix this inadvertent um, incursion into a regulatory well. Uh, the notice of intent includes a drainage plan, an O&M, and, um, and I believe that um, the bottom line is that this is an approvable project. Um, uh, the, the new snowplow contractor will be obviously be made sure to know that he's not supposed to plow that area. And there any questions I can answer about the notice of intent? Jim? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my, my question is I might modify the planting um, selection slightly. Oh. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. I didn't think you would have problems with that. Court. No questions. Laurie. It was photo mat. Wasn't <laughs> that the name of it? Was it a photo yeah. mat? You have a better memory than yeah. I, but that's the first thing you go to the right. memory. It was photo mat. The girl's name was Kathy. I remember anything else. Yeah. Anything. Um, and then the only other thing, um, for how bad the winter was, I think if that's all the snow plow guy did, I think they got off pretty good there. And I thought. This snowball guy um, actually got caught by Officer Martinson, so I'm sure the snowball oh. guy was very frightened. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Mike. Section 4.2 of your stormwater management report. On each of those bolts where you have one, two, three, four, five. You have things that say should be kept clean, uh, should be kept clean, um, if not, if necessary. Should we change those into a positive statement so that if they, uh, <laughs> um, so, so it's, it's clear. So they, 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 you know, it's not, clean. I, I, I like what your plan says. I just want some assurances that 
what you're saying is what will people understand is going to happen. So you want a mandatory term, Mike? Is that what no, you want? I, I think so. Shall, shall, be, uh, shall, shall be Mike, good, yeah. Mike is a very smart man. He knows where I'm coming from. You all set? I'm all set. Jamie. No questions. Mary. No questions. That's it. Mike, could could you add one little section to this operation and maintenance and explain what's going to happen to snow in the future? Is this a proper place to be storing snow? Uh, it's there for preventative measures, isn't it? Uh, it is. It's there? It, it, it's preventative no, measures. Well, they lost the, uh, uh, seems to me this whole aisle was piled with snow. Um, so they, they were all stored on the uh, west of the edge of the park a lot, so it was a mile and a half of it. Hi. And it was hot. Hi, yeah. yeah. So if this was just a o overly enthusiastic I think what happened is they were going to get a puddle and... Oh, they, oh, oh, they wanted to, they wanted to they open up the dam. Yeah. 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 Okay. It was, a, yeah. it was a rugged winter. It, Basically, address this if I want to show them. Okay. Okay. All right. Any other questions from the board? I'll entertain a motion. Then. I have enough motion. information here. Move to close the hearing. Under advisement. Second. It's Mari and Mary. Any other questions from the Best board? Scene. Best scene. Yeah, I'm sorry. Best scene. Mari, you can hear revised Mary. Okay, sure. Revised. Stormwater Management 01M, taking out the word should in 4.2.1 and 4.2.2 management should. Yep. Shall. <laughs> Any other questions or comments from the public? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Abstentions, unanimous so moved. I can't help but I can point out to the commission that a little while ago was a bunch of articles about how we and what. <laughs> the only way you don't want them. Accidents happen. Oh, it was a cranberry bottle. Yeah. Yes, it was a cranberry bottle. Yeah. And then dug it out. Okay, next up is Yolanda and Anatoly. Anatoly Skulkin of 209 Lakeshore Drive. East Falmouth, Mass, for permission to redevelop a series of masonry stairs to the edge of Jenkins Pond through the existing dock that includes replacement steps and stairway extension with segmental blocks and crushed stone base to repair the existing stone wall, supplemented as needed, install native mitigation vegetation, native, I'm sorry, install native vegetation and associated clearing, excavating, grading, and landscaping, Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I will say any of my questions and still okay. questions for our presentation. Good evening, Mr. Tavares. Good evening. For the record, my name is Wayne Tavares. I'm a registered landscape architect and professional wetland scientist. I've been hired by the contractor of this particular uh, site. I think it's a very doable project to sort of a repair of the landscape that's down there. I've, hi I've uh, handed you out some uh, colored plans that refer to the plan of record. Uh, you have an existing land, uh, survey plan, and you also have a proposed plan for what's to be done. Uh, currently down there, there's about 44 uh, square feet of existing old, very old, concrete in the ground. Uh, we'd like to complete this to the dock. It's a slippery slope. I've shown the slope here on the uh, plan as 1 to 7.2. And uh, when I flagged this some time ago, I was sticking the sliding on the pine needles that are down there. So on this colored plan, it shows three things that we're interested in proposing for this project. Number one is the uh, continuation of the path that I just mentioned. The paving is old, it's concrete, it was laid in the ground, and uh, what we're proposing to do is to make it extremely pervious, and there's a cross section on the plan that shows crushed stone underneath. It's actually a big dry well, 
and the uh, segmental blocks that are in there is no cement to this. These are blocks that are put in place with joints and cracks to them. It allows the um, water, rainwater, to filter down into the uh, uh, crushed stone. And from there, this is all in carver coarse sand, so the subsoil here is all porous. And we're hoping you go along with it. It's extending at 128 square feet total. 44 currently exists. It takes you right down to the dock that's down there. And anybody who's seen the project, I think you'll understand that it is pretty slippery. The other, second part of the project is in blue. It is uh, uh, an old uh, wall that was built some time ago and has fallen into disrepair. <coughs> we would intend, oh, by the way, all work here is to be done by hand. There's no machinery, there's no access for machinery here. Anything that's brought in or out will be by wheelbarrow and planks over the existing steps. Um, <coughs> so there's existing um, field stone wall. Uh, we intend to rebuild it in kind, in the way that it is right now, and just sort of fill in the blanks of where it's uh, fallen. It's a dry wall. There is no footing for this wall. It's to be rebuilt as is. One stone on top of another. It's called a dry laid stone wall. Um, there's not a, it's not an aesthetic issue per se. It's more of a functional issue because we're losing um, uh, some soil above it in an, as erosion into the uh, Jenkins Pond area. The third part of this is a mitigation uh, planting to hopefully offset some of what we're asking for. So we've come up with a pretty good list and a pretty good size area. The whole backyard is devoid of grass. There is no real mowable grass as there is in the front of the house, the roadside of the house. So we're looking to install that list of plants that you see there. It's uh, quite an indigenous list. Um, we asked for a waiver because we certainly are working within the 50-foot zone of Jenkins Pond. Uh, we don't, I've gone through every performance standard here. It's the way I usually do it, especially when we're in 50 feet of, uh, of a, uh, any resource area. And I don't see where we're not meeting performance standards anywhere. So that's a, a key issue. We've been issued a DEP. Um, file number for this, DEP 25-4131. So um, they think the file is complete. They haven't, of course, assented to the project. That's up to you. But we do have a file number. I'll be glad to answer any other questions that you might have. Jim? Yeah. When that cloth in the area, is that in mitigation plantings or just Across the segmental the block? The little bubble area with the little half on it. Okay, the original? The green. The, the green. Green. Uh, green. Yeah, that's the mitigation that's the planted. Mitigation. Yes, everything in green is to be planted. Okay. Do you, so that whole area right there, you're going to plant with 17 sweet prone, 8 bayberry, bayberry 7 ink berry, and 10 low bush blueberry, that whole area? Uh, yeah. That's what I had. Okay, I, I actually, I did this. Let's Mr. Rice, one second. Um, did you do your calculations between what currently exists, and if I missed them in your narrative, I apologize, um, between the concrete stairs that currently exist and the steps in the transition area? You say your transition area is going to be crushed stone too? No? Yes. Okay. Underneath. Did you Everything. do a calculation? between the steps that currently exist and the, what you're proposing to do? 44 square feet exist. 128 yeah. square feet proposed. 128 less 44 is, what, 80? No. Yeah, 84 square feet new is what it would be. Times three because you're working in the zone A for land under water bodies. Ah, OK. Got That's there. in the buffer zone regulations, mm -hmm. um, so that I, I have, I'm sorry, go ahead, John. John. My, That's okay, my so that would be what, 252? Three times 84, 252, yes. yes. Okay. So, 252, I have, I have it here somewhere, I'm looking for it right now. I have an area, here it is here. 
The total area of encroachment within the 50-foot zone is 128 square feet, less 44 already existing. I then reiterate this list. Total area of mitigation for wildlife replacement is equal to 580 square feet. So that's so double. So 580 square feet, you're going to put 42 feet. And 17 of them sweet fern. And 17 of them sweet fern. That's what I'm getting at. Okay, I have here 17 sweet fern at 3 foot on center, 8 bayberry at 5 foot on center, that's 18 to 24 inch, 7 ink berry, 18 to 24 inch, 5 foot on center. And no, I, I get, the, I get yeah. that. I think you need just to add some more plants. That's fine. Yeah, yeah I so think I'm, I'm, I want to listen to what you're recommending. You see it in a little bit of a more dense fashion, <coughs> and I'm really not a particularly big fan of sweet fern. Um, we want to kind of beef up a, a vegetated buffer to Jenkins Pond, especially since I believe this part is also. Um, the Water Resource Protection District, so um, your actually zone A from that edge of the pond is 100 feet. Um, so if you, we could just modify that planting scheme, that would be... Be happy to um, do so. Yeah, we're, we're, we're definitely going to have to add more plants in that. Okay, not to take the dagger the other way, but if... We did our calculations right, and you said you wanted a two for one, and we're up to 252. Three, 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 for, one. One. three for one. Three for one. So three times the 84 was 252, and I have 580. That, that's great, Wayne, but I'm just saying that the, you have 580, the plants are going to be really spread out. No, no, no. Okay. Yeah, parts. I'm not saying you're right. Um, if you wanted to do the 580 and do the three foot on the center, I mean, you're going to be doing a lot more plants than than you have. Right, yeah, okay. nine, nine into that is 70 plants, 60 some odd plants, and uh, 17, 18, 25. Yeah, and I, I do, I would like to see um, sweet fern substituted with something else. Sure, but not a problem. So you'd but like a revised plan? A plethora would be good. Okay. A plethora would be actually uh, really nice down there. It's a very pretty flowering plant. Okay. You all set, Jim? Yes, that's it. Jim. No Thank questions. You. Mary. Thank you, Jim. Um, I just am wondering whether we may want some more of the existing trees depicted on the plan. I'm thinking I, you've got this one oak tree near the stairs. It is not an oak tree. It's a pine. That, yes. Right. But... Um, I don't know why that got selected to be put on there and not some others. Like there are two, there's kind of a pair of trees with a board. Yes. Between yes. them. Yes. Not on the plan and various others. So um, I, I don't know how the rest of the board feels about that. But yeah. I referred to the survey as plan on that. He wasn't asked to pick up a lot of trees. So I'll ask him to okay. pick that up. Okay. Thank there. you. Sure. Yeah. Not a problem. That's it. Thanks. Betsy. Um, is the existing dock licensed? It's a question I haven't been able to answer in four months. I've talked to the owners. They bought it, I think, seven years ago. Um, I was here for the amnesty program in the 90s. Uh, it looks to be that old, but that doesn't mean it's licensed. So uh, to be honest with you, I, I haven't been able to find that out. It's not taxed as a structure. So I, from that point of view, I almost canvassed the opposite side of the of the uh, pond to see if the neighbors remembered it because 60% of the people have docks out there. So they would remember this dock and that's how I, I usually do it unless it's memorialized in a photograph that's dated. And I have, I have no proof of it. The owners have been asked, um, no, to answer your question, no, or not yet. How's that? Okay. <clears throat> um, and my other question is, there's a little set of steps that are there. Mm -hmm. Are they going to be removed? They'll be removed, yes. Okay. Absolutely. And you have a duck family. <laughs> I don't know if you had it while you oh, updated it. I missed it when I was there, there's I a, guess. There's a duck family mm -hmm. at the edge of the water there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been there three times. No kidding. Really. All right. That's That's it. It. Yeah. They may not want the Of course. They might not. No questions. Mari? Um, Wayne, I think we need the, um, the 
existing top of wall elevation so that they know what to build to. Okay. So that it doesn't become larger than what it exists now. Okay. Um, we also probably should have a PLS stamp on this because um, you have structures in the, usually you have a certified land surveyor put the, a professional mm -hmm. land surveyor stamp. On the proposed plan. Yes. yes. Uh, yeah, we usually require that. Yeah. Correct. Okay, and P um, I'm sorry, let me say this my way. PLS or PE? PLS. PLS, okay. Um, all the trees in the plan. Um, in the planting, when you're doing the mitigation planting, um, I will probably put it in order, but we usually, you show it all hashed underneath the one tree you did show, but there are quite a few trees. Mm -hmm. And we don't count that area under the canopy of the tree as mitigation area because you can't dig around the roots usually without disturbing them. So the you're going to have to go outside that. Um, and I had the license of the wall was the other, I know, uh, the dock. And I think we should find out about the dock um, because if it needs to get licensed, it should be done. And permanent. And permanent. Okay. Uh, one's Thank water you. dependent, the other's not. Okay. So. Hopefully we can get to the number okay, one. Okay, thank you. That was all the questions I had. Mike, <coughs> while you're redoing the uh, plan, add the, the benchmark and the datum. It should be on the surveyor's plan. He did. I believe he did on No, he didn't. I wish I could find it. So, okay. I have to see him anyhow for a couple that, of years. That's, so. that's, that's why I'm... What's the pleasure of the board? Do we have enough information? What would you like to do here? You have I'd like to see a new plan. I think we need to yeah. continue. With the we dog, need to at least the dog. Plan. We need plants um, beefed up and the species replaced. <coughs> we need um, the datum on the plan. We need to serve in, have to put their stamp on it. We need the top of the existing wall. So I, as okay. do staff, would you like to request a reviewing. continuance, Mr. DeVos? I certainly would like to continue this hearing, if possible, for my corrections to be made. Absolutely. Can I ask a question, too, on the top of the wall? There's a number of ways of doing that. And uh, my way from my landscape background is to do a little cup to pick up the material. I don't want to make the wall higher, but it does make the wall this much higher. In order to stop the water, drainage and actually it waters the plants that are adjacent to that wall. So if that's appropriate, that's what I like to do. It's a swale, um, Jen, and it actually slows the water down, Makes allows sense. the water to absorb. Is it a dry laid wall with fabric cloth? Yeah. Okay. No. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Okay. That's all right. All right. I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to continue. Well, we don't have the date. date. We need a date. When, how long Oops. is it going to take you? We can get you on the 16th because it's probably not going to be ready for the next week. So 15th, 15th of September. 16th of September. 16th. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Fine. Excellent. We'll see you on the 16th. All right. Great. Thank Any you. Any questions of the applicant? I'll make a motion to continue to the 16th of September. Second. That's it. At the request of the applicant, I make a motion to continue this to the 16th of September. Second. I already seconded. Are you already yeah. seconded? Oh, okay. Betsy, Mary. Okay. Any other questions from the board? I, I can handle it. Hearing none. Any questions from the public? Hearing none. I'll call for the vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. Abstentions. Unanimous. So we'll continue to the September 16th. Thank, Thank you. you very much. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night. Okay. Next up is a continued request for a hearing under notice of intent. Pines Penzance Point Nominee Trust, care of Anastasios Parafestus Trustee, 152, 160 Penzance Point and 0 Penzance Road, map 52-01-007-000, Woods Hole, Mass, for permission to demolish the existing single family house, shed, driveway to construct a one bedroom studio 
with storage space below, install utilities to connect to the septic system on lot number two, reconstruct and maintain the existing stone seawall to include stone steps, stone wall construction, wetland relocation, wetland replication, and associated clearing, excavating, grading, and landscaping at 152, along with construction access and wetland resource area buffer restorations along the existing right-of-way of parcel 7, map 52-01-007-000 for permission to install an in-ground swimming pool, pool patio, stone terrace, stone retaining walls, stone steps, pool utilities, lighting, fencing, to modify the existing irrigation system, provide wetland replication and off-site mitigation to realign the driveway, temporary drainage and associated clearing, grading, and landscaping. Um, I would like to request that this be tabled, Mr. McGrath, until after the um, hearing for the um, certificate of compliance. Yeah, that's would an that appropriate be a problem? request, and we would uh, ask the commission to do that. Okay, so we're good with that? So, so Second. Okay, so the motion at table by Betsy, second by Mary. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. Abstentions unanimous, so moved. Tables. Okay, then next up is Shannon and Jeffrey Conway, five. Ottawa Lane, Falmouth, Mass. Request to amend the existing order of conditions, DEP 254028, to perform additional landscape improvements that include the removal of an existing patio, installation of a new patio, installation of new sod, and mitigation plantings and associated clearing, excavating, grading, and landscaping. Again. You're up, Mr. Borselli. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the Commission. Thanks, Mike. His, his cover sheet. That was a narrative. My name is Michael Borselli from Falmouth Engineering, and I represent the applicant, Shannon and Jeffrey Conway, and the property owners at five. Ottawa Lane. I'm joined tonight by Jen Malilla of Centerline Design, the landscape design, landscape designer for the project. This is uh, the second amendment on this property. You've seen this property and the abutting property on uh, a few occasions. Um, the abutting property is currently under uh, a raise and reconstruction of a home. It's on a, currently underway. And on this property was before you for a septic uh, upgrades, some drainage improvements, uh, some landscape improvements, and some other things. So um, this is a, what we hope is the final amendment. The new owners, um, as they've lived with the property, have uh, wanted to do some alterations and changes now that they have a sense of how they use the property. So. This is, I, I expect, the last amendment on this. I believe it qualifies as an amendment because it's, in, a, in my opinion, relatively minor activities. <coughs> so the property is uh, located on the waters of uh, Oyster Pond, which is a salt pond. So the re, uh, wetland resource of no is land on the salt pond. Uh, existing single family dwellings, uh, significant landscaping, other activities and conditions on site that are common to a residential property. And one of those existing conditions is a small sort of dilapidated patio on this side of the property that's not in the best of condition. It's in an area on the property that the Conways have uh, determined they don't really use as often as this side. And um, what they'd like to do is remove the patio that's in this location, restore that area, and then 
replace that patio over here in an area that they would use uh, on a more regular basis and it lends itself to the way that they use the house. This patio that they're proposing to remove is actually closer to the salt pond in the, in the wetland adjacent. This yellow area is currently a lawn area and it wouldn't be quite as close to the pond. This patio is larger than the patio area that they're proposing to remove. So there's an increase in impervious surfaces, and your regulations at uh, FWR 10.18 require mitigation planting at a ratio of three to one for increases. So we've, we've gone through the calculation on the site plan, and I believe it's also on this plan. This was prepared by uh, Jennifer. So the mitigation planting is for the increases proposed over here. Um, and Jen can go through the details of that. That pretty much sums up the, the activities. The work would be done by hand, no heavy equipment necessary. The site is stable and level. There's actually stone retaining walls that are in effect the limit of work. So we think it's fairly um, benign and, and approvable under your regs. And I'll turn it over to Jen, and then we'll both here to answer questions. Good evening. Is this on? Is this on? It, it's on for TV. You can speak up. Uh, it's my name's Jen Malilla from Centerline Studios Landscape Architecture. One more um, time with your name, please. Jennifer Malilla. Malilla. Can you spell it for me? M A L I L A. Thank you. Um, Thank so. Basically, what we've done is just, like Mike said, is relocated a patio that's not being used um, very often for a spot over here. The current location of the existing patio doesn't really facilitate a table and chairs. It's very narrow. So the client would just like a spot just to put a table. So that's sort of why it bumps out a little bit. It is larger than the old one, and so the mitigation consists of some um, fragrant sumac and some sweet fern. It is 300 square feet was the calculation, so, and we're not going near the tree, the base of the tree. We've stayed, you know, by regulation away from the trunk of the tree. Um, the client would also like to replace the existing grass that she has, which is not Falmouth friendly, with a product called Black Beauty Sod, which is a drought tolerant, um, high fescue blend of sod, which uh, they currently have on the front yard, and it actually doesn't like irrigation. When we've irrigated it, it gets root rot, so it really likes uh, very little water. So it's proven itself to be drought tolerant, and she just wants to replace it um, with some patches that are, uh, these areas are currently already lawn, a non-Falmouth friendly lawn blend, and we just want to replace it in kind with the Black Beauty product. Um, same with over on the other side. There's currently lawn way over there on the top right, and she just wants to replace that. And also whatever we remove over there would just be the same, Black Beauty sod. So that's what our client would like to do. And uh, like I said, the product is uh, a very good product and disease resistant and drought tolerant. Is there any questions? Jen. Um, Jen, that species of clover that you have over there, the variety, is that a, a dwarf variety? Yeah. Yeah, the crystallina is a, uh, okay. a dwarf. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then bouncing over to the sweet fern and the um, um, uh, uh, sumac. Um, I'm sure you've heard of me on the thing before with this, the, the sweet fern, so if you want to put some more butter and maybe kind of change that up a bit. And that, uh, sure. I can't remember off the top of my head what the whole landscaping scheme is on that, but I'm not quite 
sure yeah. they had any sort of zoom mapping that. There was no. Blue Flax did a mitigation plan yeah. for the whole rest of the point, yeah. and it does, not that's why I chose those two. It was just sort of being consistent oh, with it was. Okay, that's what, I was saying. what was I going go on. I look at Blue Flax's plan, um, but um, I will, but if you could just, you know, um, propose some uh, different varieties of species, that would be great. Okay. Um, other than that, I did walk the property with Mike and Jen to go over the proposed um, changes they wanted to do with the patio when I was on site. I didn't really have any concerns with, with that. Cool. Um, well, Will this be a continuous thing, or can she just submit a plan? She can just submit a plan. It's fine. No other questions. Did you have another question, Jen? You had another yeah. question? Did we take the trunk off that tree? I can't remember. Didn't we talk about the tree? We did take one yes. off. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yep. You good, Jen? Yeah. Okay. Maureen. Um, just a couple quick questions. Um, I'm glad to hear that you're not going to be irrigating because we'll probably sit in the order of say that there won't be any irrigation here. Right. Um, Just temporary to get it going. Well, on the lawn, it's kind of hard to put temporary. Usually you just use a sprinkler to get it going. Yeah, just like yeah. a sprinkler yeah. head, yeah. Um, the other thing is you're talking, Black Beauty is just a, a brand. Yeah, it's a trademark brand, brand and yeah. I have the spec of it right okay. here. Okay, because then you also have Lesco in here, which is also a trademark brand. So I'm curious, which are you using, the Lesco? All disturbed areas. This is number eleven in your plant. Yeah, that's that's a traditional. Excuse me, a traditional note that I had, and then we had um, approval after that notation to do the Black Beauty sod. So From it's not Lesco; it's just Black okay. Beauty. Okay. And you and you do have to stipulate a fescue, or because Black Beauty will also have not totally drought tolerant. Yeah, um, I have the spec of it if you want it. Yeah, I've got it right here. For the record, that yeah. would be great. Thank you. Um, and then also in your low impact lawn maintenance, low impact lawn maintenance, mm -hmm. um, we have a no fertilizer. Uh, Falmouth Friendly Lawns does allow um, a, a certain percentage of uh, nitrogen, mm -hmm. but within 100 feet of any resource, it's a zero zone. Okay. Um, so there is no fertilizing. I don't think even on much of this property. Okay. So um, I think that should be taken off the notes so that the contractors sure. don't see this and go, oh, we can fertilize with Falmouth Friendly Lawn. Um, the other thing with the Falmouth Friendly Lawn that we do allow, and we in, it's actually in, the by, in our bylaw, is to leave the grass clippings. And in number seven, you say the um, you're gonna, uh, lawn will be mowed to a height of three inches or higher, and lawn clippings will, uh, will not be disposed of in areas on the down slope sides of the property. I don't think there are really too many downs where those, that grass lawn is. It's pretty flat, am yeah, I it's correct? Yeah, it's flat. There's, so, a, there's a little bit of a roll on the other section. So, and again, in Falmouth Friendly Lawns, um, and actually in this zone, you leave the clipping. So. Okay. Um, and then you have on your, your um, legend here, existing tree to be removed. Where is that? I looked for a long time on this This is plant. just a standard legend. The project went on beyond this lower than this, another project okay. for it. Well, could so I recommend then that, I, that if there are two different projects, I was not here, a lot of us weren't on the board, and just to keep this project separate from that project because they're two different lots, mm -hmm. they should be separate. And even, you know, what you're doing on them. Um, and then proposed shrub perennials, obviously that was on the other lot. Well, it's the same lot, it's just it was a different phase of the project, so. The where, where, oh, when the, the, the front yard was done. and all that stuff? The front yard was done. Okay. Now and then I was there today after the rain, and I noticed on this plan that you had a whole bunch of infiltrators put in, um, the flow diffusers, and mm -hmm. the contours, and I'm going to defer this to the chair, to Jen. Um, there's a lot of work on this lot from the other lot. Are they jointly owned? Yes. Oh, okay, so I'm thinking, if that was my neighbor, if he was <laughs> doing what was happening on that lot, I'd be losing it. Um, because they basically, I don't know when these basins were put in, and I, I assume you're trying to protect them during construction, so you made that There's other a burn. swale, the, the, yeah. Yeah, the, the natural swale, and you're capturing all the silts and fines and that until you're all done. Okay, now I get it. Today it wasn't so much. <laughs> um, one other thing on that, we put one of those silt socks in the I saw it in there. Yeah. And then you need to go clean it. Oh, yeah. Or somebody does. We have that. We got to do it a lot. 
a lot. <laughs> and then just another note when I was there, um, you might want to check the side of the house where this new patio is going to be because water was rushing out of the wall. So I don't know what it was. Which, which wall? Uh, the one where your new patio is going to go. Where the, was there's it? a little bedroom. It looks like a little window. No, way over here. Over here? Yep. Oh. Anyway, okay. just you might want to. It might still be running. I don't know. Okay. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Thank right. you. No comments. No questions. Oh, one more thing. No. I no more cutting on the. They've been rounding up and cutting on the. And maybe that was in another order. I don't know. Cutting on the other side on the pond, on the on the pond mm -hmm. side of the wall. Okay. There's some stumps down there, and yeah. and, and it looks like they're doing some, some yeah. trees down yeah. because of the gall wasp in that area. I know. Yeah, these were just little guys. Um, they were they're. It was a it was a permanent allowance for some of that. That's what I figured. Yeah. I figured you before. wouldn't have done that before we showed up. Maybe after. You never know. That's it. I remember the first one of the first times I saw Mike. We went out, we all went out to his yes, project, and he hadn't been out there that day. <laughs> and the client had mowed the entire, the entire buffer, buffer mm -hmm. the to the idea. dirt. I purposely don't remember that. <laughs> 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 so, um, I, I, have no, I have no questions. Mary. No questions. Jamie. No questions. Jim, can you just give me a revised plan taking off note on your plan off note number 11? <coughs> Take off the existing trees, the remove legend, and the note about the dwarf variety, plethora, and then rechange the species on there, and we should be good. Uh, and also the, all the um, the low impact lawn maintenance. Oh yeah. yeah. Because it's all of it. it. Whatever more he wants on that. So I I had one other comment when I was reading through this. I had never seen the term non falmouth friendly lawn. Yeah. And I was thinking, I have a non falmouth friendly lawn. <laughs> I mean, nothing happens with my lawn. My lawn is a, is a more it's of a Cape, Cape Cod, Cod lawn, lawn than yours. Cape Cod, Cape Cod lawn. <coughs> okay, the board has some information. Yeah, you're, you can deal with a revised plan. Yes, yeah. I can. Can I make a motion to close the hearing and take it under advisement? Second. Okay, we got a motion by Maury and a second by Mary. Any other comments or questions by the board? Any other comments or questions from the public? Yes, ma'am. Could you just come to the podium and give us your name? Hi, good evening. My name's Kristen Alexander, and I live on the other end of the cove, um, and I have a big concern about what's going on there. Uh, I've seen quite a bit of cutting of the natural plethora and the natural habitat on the pond. Uh, my main concern for that is that, well, I have, you know, I have pictures of how it looks. It's not the same as when I first arrived there. And uh, I, I don't know what's going on, but I'd like it to stop. <laughs> There, you know, the cove is, as you know, a natural habitat for many uh, different species. And uh, I don't believe that uh, taking out the indigenous plantings that are overhanging the pond and re mitigating them with something different is, <coughs> is um, adequate uh, for those species of animals that are living there. Um, uh, I already see signs of clearing and signs of water runoff into the pond. Uh, from the construction site, and so adding to that, you know, the patio and whatnot, I can show you pictures of how it looks um, and where my concerns are. Okay. If you'd like to submit those, we're going to take them for the record. Is that all right with you? That's fine with me. Okay, and we'll take a look at them. Maury, you had something else? Yes, I did. Um, I noticed also on the um, where the patio is going to be removed, there's a, a six inch white PVC pipe that is that um, all the roof runoff is going into the pond. So that needs to be mitigated. Yeah, it's if you go on the other side of the wall. And also, there's a collapsed, deteriorated dock with like indoor outdoor carpet on it, or it's green. It was hard to tell because it was totally submerged. 
and I think that needs to be taken out of the out of the resource. Was, was that in the original orders? Yeah, I, can I speak to that? Yes, please, Mike. I wonder if just the neighbor's con uh, concern. If the neighbor's concern is that the neighbor would have to pay for the sewer she may not realize that there's an order of conditions that allowed for uh, a lot of maintenance and restoration on the bank and it might make sense if she wants to meet I'm not an expert on this but Blue Flex design did all the design and assisted us in getting the permits we I'd be happy if she wants to work through Jen to have a site meeting to see if we can like go you know talk to her about what her concerns might be and maybe Teresa Sprague could review it I'm just I, I, I don't want it to be portrayed as something that was a violation. It was all done with permits. And it's, right. sometimes that looks like a violation. Yeah, I, I remember, Mike, and I know it was pretty extensive. There was a lot of stuff involved. And would you be um, agreeable to that, meeting the representative from Bluefax and just? Um, yes, I, I do believe there was an area that was cleared that Okay. And that was not in there. Have, have you come into the office and spoke to the administrator or the um, or um, Mark or anyone in there? I, well, I'm really new to this, so okay. I just purchased the property. Um, I have been you can come in and talk to us. Uh, Mark has office hours on Friday from 1 to 4, and you can always make an appointment with me, and we can go right. and look at the property. Yeah. Also, I know the three properties adjacent to this one, they all just went through extensive landscaping as well, um, uh, invasive removals on the bank. So there has been a lot of work on a lot of properties, on four properties right around that area. This, so, is, this is the yes. oh, um, where There's the, been a lot the, of work. So. Where the uh, patio is being Oh, okay. Um, but I can, I can definitely take your pictures going to go out and Thank you. Could we have the picture? Can we have the picture? Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Chairman, with regard yes. to the dock, I'm sorry, um, the old dilapidated dock, we, we are, you're going to see a new notice of intent related to that in the near future. Okay. That'll include removing that. I thought that came up before. I thought it did too. Well, it was discussed at other hearings because it, since, since since we've been working on this project, it went from a dock that was dilapidated but you could walk on to a dock that was dilapidated that you couldn't walk on to a dock that's now submerged. Right. And it's just got to get out and an application is going to be filed that uh, we're hoping we can Probably replace can that. So that's, In order of that's fine. I guess we have it. Has there been compliance on these? I thought we addressed that. I thought it was going to be taken out in a yeah. previous order. That order is still open. That order is still open. So it has oh, well, I think, uh, I mean, check with, I mean, look at it and check with Jen. Okay. Could you go on the other side of the room? Well, you can. I mean, but. But it's good to have. I mean, we definitely want one in the I just file. Want we have to have one. It to be Got it. natural. I don't want it to. Yeah, I'll put that Thank in my order. Thank you. Order. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I just want it to be okay. a natural habitat. Yeah, this one's only one. Thank you, Ms. That's why I. Okay, so you'll come in and talk to. And then, and like I say, Mike is offered to have the designer meet with you also. So Thank you. hopefully that'll answer your questions and maybe see what's gonna the finished product's gonna look like you know so okay any other questions or comments from the public okay hearing none I'll call for the vote Mary did you have something for it we're, we're voting to close this correct yes. and you have the question. who was the who made the motion I from? made the motion Lori okay we got that all all right well, now that we have this, we before we now we've heard from the. And but, I mean, I haven't looked at the pictures yet. I would like to withdraw my um, re uh, request for closing um, until maybe we can just look at this, and you go out and make sure that. But is that I, something yeah, I don't that's know, in? Because is, we could just make them 
plant it, more. Right. And, and is that something that affects this particular project, or is this on? I'm, I'm almost getting the feeling this is the whole. Yeah, that's yeah. what I think. Yeah. yeah. So I, yeah. I, I mean. I think we should address you, this. In. You weren't on when this came in, but no. it was a blue flax, and it covered a couple of properties, and it took a took a lot of invasives away, yeah. and stuff. So it's pretty extensive. But my question would be, if I mean, usually when we have them take invasives away, we have them plant. And when I well, was down on that pond today behind that wall, there are stumps, and they honestly they didn't look like invasives to me, but it's kind of hard with the stump. Right. Usually, an invasive is a vine. I mean, or Phragmites or something, but there were true stumps that were on the water side, the pond side of that wall. And there's been limbing. And there's... Blue flux. Blue flux. Yeah. I'll call Teresa tomorrow. I mean, my now. point... I, it, but I had never I been there before. So. There's no way that the Conways would be doing anything not in accordance with the order that I'm aware of, unless they're just complete... Uh, I don't... Ex Blue flux... And uh, Centerline are the only contractors on site, and they both yeah. would be following the order. But that's why I think a site meeting or, or designer or the site um, work is in accordance with that order, to the best of my knowledge. That's why I thought a site visit would be in order. And if, that would, if there was some violation, it would be an enforcement order. Yeah. It shouldn't be related to this amendment. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering, because I think on the other side of the wall, if there has been, you know, it went ex over the allowed cutting or and I haven't looked at the order from the original one that they were maybe I know in a lot of them um, you know when you're getting rid of invasives then it takes three years to get rid of them to be able to replant and if there was a planting schedule of clethra or some water to, you know plant that was good for that area but there I mean there is living and I know um, Mrs. Alexander when there's sometimes when there's vines and trees They've, they've killed the limb off and they've cut it, but I've never been to the site before, so you guys would know more because you've already been there once. Yeah, well, I think maybe Jen, yes. either Jen or... I will call Teresa or have Melanie set up an appointment with Teresa tomorrow to go and address the concerns along that, because okay. that's going to be covered under that whole big invasive removal and replanting plan that span on a with 3, 5, and 11 original right. ones. Mike? Um, I it seems there's two issues. Uh, the issue of the patio was before us, and I think that's pretty clear. And the second issue is, is there been activity that is not appropriate or wasn't planned? And if we can approve the patio and then take mm -hmm. it as a, a visit, we can address it that way. Right. We might mm -hmm. that. I kind of agree. I agree. Yeah. Courtney. Okay. So I'll just continue uh, on my mode. You know, they're just, there's, just, there's a lot of sort of elements here that are kind of cloudy. And it seems to me that um, what would be appropriate is to continue this for a week or so while we sort it out and we're all clear and move forward. The, the I, I don't us, like to prove things. Are, I'm are sorry. I don't like to prove things that are, that are up I, in the I air. Think, uh, to, me, to me, I think there's two separate issues. I think the first order is, is, if anything, is what this all alludes to. And this here is totally separate, except for that piece of PVC pipe that Maury mentioned. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, and, and that could be causing some, what she's seen for erosion also. So. Yeah, it's a six inch. It's not even a four inch. It's a. Yeah. You know, but I, I, I don't know. I'm still. I don't have a problem. I, I don't have I a don't problem have closing the season. Closing it. I think going out on site. And, and there's, there's an issue that come back as a... There's order out there that does all right. around that right. peninsula that's under a whole, totally separate order that Teresa is managing. And, and it's I'll pretty extensive, tomorrow. it really is. I'll call her tomorrow and set up an appointment with her to go check it out at some point early next week. I, you know, I'm sure there's no problem. I just... No, I I'm not. I, I don't have a comfort zone with this. That's no, I Through the chair, Russ. I have a comfort yes. zone. When I was there today, again, I'm new to these sites. Um, I really was compelled to go up to the big dig, um, <laughs> but I didn't know what the legality, because I didn't, I didn't even actually see a DDP number. I'm sure it's out on the road, but I was in a little car that I was going to rip the whole guts out of it over the bump, so I was being very careful. Um, but I, I think, you know, when you see sites like that, you, my impulse is to go and make sure after a rain or whatever, What's going on? You know, just don't take it for granted that they have an order. But can we? I remember we used to be able to, and then there was a, 
You had to get permission to go on a site. You when can it, go on the site. There's an open order of conditions. Okay. Because you know it is. It's a big project, and um, of course, there's big equipment. You don't want to be running around up on the hill and excavating. There's an open order of conditions. It's, okay. It's a, it's a big project. Project. And all hopefully, right. all the erosion is going down in the hole and not over the bank. Okay, so we have a motion by Maury, and I did you second? Second, you second yeah, yeah. by Betsy. Somebody seconded. it. So, is yeah. there any other comments from the public on this? Mike, you good? All set. Yes. Board members are good. Okay, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. Abstain. Abstention. So we have um, six. So it's closed. Yep. So it's closed. So we have six um, yes and one abstention. And then we go out and address right. Yeah. Right. What the, the right. concerns that are Yes, Mary. I'm to do this, but could I request a uh, three-minute break? Absolutely. Before the next item. Thank you. We'll recess for three minutes. <laughs> but I, I had never been out there before. So, Miss, you understand, come in, talk, and you can yeah. look at that whole file, and and then we'll go send somebody go out there. Those stones that you're talking about, that, they were, that was all federal. It was gone. It's, there was nothing invasive. I mean, it's well, that, well, for me to watch this being taken away. We can make them replant. That, you know, they can replant Clefra, believe me on that. It's but it's not going to be what it yeah. is. As you can see in those pictures, it's a beautiful habitat. I haven't seen the picture. She's going to speak. She yeah. should come to the microphone. It's going to take 10 years to make that recess. We're at recess. Well, it's We're just trying to give her guidance on how she can follow through with Jen and staff. Right there. Yeah, I'm going to look at the plant. I'm trying to get her the most. Those are really nice pictures. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, this is all one. I was, I really was surprised how clear this. I, I can't see it from that angle because mm -hmm. obviously I'm. But this is gone. What's your address? It's come load and it's, but it's on the. The curve of the pond, there's a cove where their point is, it comes back around. So I look right over at their patio that they're taking out. And yeah. I've seen the clearing. And I've seen some coming as I take um, out onto the water. There's coming out into the water that's coming from there, the site. And it's, you know, it's That's probably a good place to start. Yep. Go right over there, take a look across, and then. Yeah. That's probably what is you don't get a good appreciation for just looking down on it because it's kind of a tough spot. Yeah, when you go, when we go to the site, yeah. we only see a really narrow Even spot the, yeah. in a little bit of the curve. Well, you can see it all from my property. It's just, you can see it starting to get bigger and the other stuff is going to Okay. Yeah. Well, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna leave. But <laughs> it doesn't look anything in so no, no I'm telling you, this whole invasive thing is starting to become. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's What's not clear invasive cut? shit. Look at this. This is all good. Native. This is all good. Native stuff. You know what's interesting? I don't see any birds. Guess what's not on this plan? Let me get the top. Guess what's not on the plan? Any of the trees? Uh, this is good enough. This and Jennifer. Yeah. Jennifer. There are no... Yeah, never mind. Erase. I'm ready myself. No, I can't. Erase. Yeah, just erase my comment. Yeah, they're in the file. I'm going to send it right back down to the boss. Good night, Christine. Thank you for the comment. Appreciate it. I'm going to look into it. Yes. This whole invasive species eradicated.
Is everybody ready to go back into session here? Yes. Oh, can we take a nap now? The lights are out? Where's the popcorn? That's about And you better leave a couple of lights on. I'll take a nap. That's good. Took my job. That's good. That's good. Nice job. Perfect. Mr. Chair. Yes, Court. Um, is there any reason why you can't consider the the enforcement orders? These are all previous conditions first before we start with new stuff. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. We tabled, okay. we sorry, tabled the notice and we're going to the... Yeah, okay, I'll call this uh, hearing back in the session. All right, now, continued request for a hearing under a certificate of compliance. Haynes. Penzance Point Nominee Trust, care of Anastasios Parafastus, 160 Penzance Road, Woods Hole, Mass., request to discuss Certificate of Compliance for Expired Orders of Conditions, DEP 25-1884, and enforcement order issued August 3rd, 2005. Jen. Mr. Chairman, one thing. Mr. McGrath, I'm looking through your PowerPoint presentation. Please address the compliance issues first before you start addressing That's why the, I asked. Yeah, I know, Courtney, I got this. Uh, the project on 152 and 160, the new work. Okay, Mike? So, okay. I understand what you have. Thank um, Mike, before you begin, this is just a procedural question. Is there, I just have a sheet for the 152 plus 160. Should there be a sheet for the enforcement hearings? A quorum sheet. A quorum sheet. Uh, I mean, no, this is the something same different. No, it's the same quorum. All right. Well, I'll You're just make a separate time. sheet for it, all right? Yeah, that's fine. All right. I didn't know what you were talking about. That's sorry. Jen, any comments before we start here? No, only that I think it's important to deal with the compliance issues prior to jumping forward to the proposed project at 116, 150. I agree. Yep. Mr. McGrath. Well, in reality, the uh, uh, the order condition DB 25-1884 uh, is the repair of a seawall, and there is a portion of the buffer that is missing. And so in our discussions with Jennifer, we agreed that the buffer was then rolled into the enforcement order. So when I look at what the notice is, the notice has, um, uh, we believe that the notice then will cure the, um, the request for a certificate of compliance that you can't issue these until after we do the work that's described in the notice. So. Um, I, uh, so procedurally it would seem that we ought to now table this and go to the hearing on the notice because if we do the work under the notice we'll then satisfy the, uh, Mr. McGrath, you cannot address the work on 160 specifically the relocation of the driveway until you get compliance on the enforcement order. Is you? Attorney Nyland and Mr. Manganello and I all had this discussion in my office, not once, but twice. I don't think Mark was the first hearing, but you might have, or first meeting, but you might have been. So just do your best, Mike, to try to separate these. I know what I know it's confusing, but yeah, try. Because you can't you cannot talk about the project at 160 until the board signs off on the enforcement order. So I, what I would do is explain the wetland restoration and replication, um, the wetland restoration and replication, and the numbers in the buffer, like we asked for you to keep them all color-coded and separate, so it would be very easy for the board to review that and then go forward. But again, that's going to be up to the board. Okay, now Mike, um, and we should go to slide three. Thank you. Um, the um, 
previously, um, by the way, there's a letter and that describes all the changes in the plans. And uh, the bottom line is that what we are proposing is that uh, there was a total of uh, 10,080 square feet of uh, new wetlands that are going to be proposed. Um, one of them is in the, I should have brought a uh, laser pointer, but it's, it's in this direction. And then there's an additional um, block of proposed wetland replication that's across the driveway. So the total of the proposed wetland replication on lot 160 is equal to the amount of area that was uh, described in the 2005 enforcement action. It's slightly over. And then uh, there was a proposed uh, buffer strips that were required under the enforcement action. And what we've done is we've put down 16,980 square feet of new buffers or enhanced buffers, and that's more than the, than the area that was required under the buffer uh, requirements. So we think it's appropriate that um, uh, in the narrative for the notice of intent, for instance, and in the accompanying letter, uh, it describes how the wetland will be constructed and replaced uh, under the aegis of LEC. So I think now it's appropriate that we now look at uh, slide um, seven. Slide seven. Um, Mark Manganello from LEC should come up here, but basically on the south side of the proposed driveway, the client's removing a tennis court and he's building a new wetland. Um, Mark can describe the technique and the procedures. Thank you. So as Mike said, the project, since we were last here, has been redesigned to include sufficient wetland and buffer plantings right. to um, achieve compliance with all previous and the current permit application. So that includes 10,080 square feet of wetland replication and 16,980 of buffer plantings. The wetland replication area on this slide is the uh, sort of, well, C-shaped white and green area here. Uh, this area contains some existing mature trees, which we're not going to disturb as part of the project, but the planting plan calls for removing the existing lawn that's in this area, excavating the soils out to create and establish wetland hydrology, and then reestablishing a wetland plant community. Uh, we've provided a full plant list with species that are suitable for this setting. Um, certainly, if there's any questions about the plant list, we're flexible on that. Uh, there's an additional wetland replication area with the same striped hatching on the bottom of this slide. These areas are going to be constructed, as I said, in areas that are either lawn presently, existing driveway, the existing tennis court, uh, and a very small portion of it, about 800 square feet, is within an existing vegetated buffer area. The buffer plantings are along Penzance Road in this area here. And if we could go back to that previous slide, this is the existing tennis court here, which is going to be removed. This is mostly lawn here. And this is a vegetated area along Penzance Road here that's going to be restored with native plantings. And just a quick word about uh, the existing vegetated areas that we're counting toward either replication or uh, buffer mitigation. These areas are dominated with non-native invasive species, so they're not areas that contain um, a significant quantity of native species. There are very few mature native trees there, so in essence we're going to remove all the non-native vegetation and reestablish a natural uh, native plant community in those areas. Uh, we did not go into that sort of with blinders on just saying, hey, we need more buffer plantings. We did look closely at it to, to evaluate whether or not the buffer plantings would actually result in a significant ecological improvement, and we found that they did because of the high density of, of non-native invasive plants in those areas. Um, there's a, an additional 
uh, detailed construction methodology within the report that I submitted. Uh, I'm happy to go through that in some more detail. This is a the plant list. Their seed mix is proposed. I think if if the commission is comfortable with the, the concept of the wetland replication and the buffer plantings in terms of the uh, footprint that they'll occupy, then we can certainly work out any issues with with planting plant species and, and uh, seed mixes. But these are our typical seed mixes and plant species lists for this type of, of setting. That's the notice, right. So I think, just to reiterate, the issues that were outstanding from the item that's listed under COCs that we're talking about now, as well as the enforcement order, are covered with the square footage of plantings we've proposed with this current submittal. There was a row of Rosa Rigos already here, and if you've been to the site, it's been invaded by purple blue strife. Uh, there's uh, Phragmites on the portion. There's, a, there's an open area in here. There's a portion of Phragmites, and then there's purple blue strife through a majority of that portion of the site. Wouldn't you agree, Mark? Uh, there's some purple. And uh, what we're showing, we're going to remove the Rosa Ragosa from that, uh, um, that area that uh, ha currently has purple loose drive sticking up through the, um, the uh, hedge of Rosa Ragosa. Um, it would seem to me uh, the commission can do what you want, but I think you need to look at the entire picture. And I would ask to be tabled this and consider everything under the nose of intent because there's a lot, a lot of other positive things that are going to be considered under the notice. Nine thousand two hundred forty square feet of what was altered. Nine thousand two hundred forty square feet was altered. Yes. Okay, and you're proposing to replicate ten thousand eighty, but that replication also includes a part of the notice that you're filling in additional wetland in that area, correct? That's right. We're all through that. Yeah. And then part of that, part of that restoration of the wetland is going to be one in lawn, two in um, the yes. tennis court, the driveway, and additional buffer that's on 152, correct? Yes, the, all of the wetland restoration that's required on 160 is on 160. Some of the restored buffers on 152. Now, Mike, uh, do you know how much of that area actually encompasses the original wetland? That's right. Where was the original wetland? The original wetland area. Can you point the original wetland area that was altered? Hang on a second. Let's give you a chance to answer here. Hang on a second. 
Okay. I don't know if the commission has brought the exhibits I brought last time. Yeah, yeah. They're in the file. Which exhibit were you looking at? Um, exhibit two. Give me a second to find it, and I think Todd is stuck here. I could roughly. When did we do an overlay? So we can see. What was that one? All right. Which one was it? Exhibit two. From the original one? 616, 15. All right. It's the easiest one I have to show you up. Basically, the, uh, it's approximately in about this. There's a slight edge. Okay, so you don't you don't know that square foot? I said 9,243. No, no, no. My question was, my What's the square footage of the new replicated wetland that overlaps with the original wetland? Oh, I don't know that. Okay. I did not calculate that. Okay. I, okay. I want to reiterate, some of the people didn't hear it before, but uh, there was an exhibit given to the commissioners that were at the original hearing that um, was a copy of a plan from the Registry of Deeds that showed that, I'm going to give you another copy. Um, this was previously given to you. I already have mine. Right here, is that the same one? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All I did was, beneficiary of the trust bought the land, he was given this plan. He was also given a historic photograph that showed there was a field there. So the bottom line is he did not realize that he was altering um, a wet. Um, it was a wetland in that it had hydric soils. Um, oh, so point. Most of those houses and roads and everything were built in wetlands. But I, I uh, uh, excuse me. Uh, no, that's not true. I've worked on 28 houses, there's 28 houses that I've done work in 24. And there's, there's, a, there's, there's very few of them that have this kind of soil. Okay. And so, it, it, what I said at the first hearing, and some people weren't here, I said it was mistakes made on both sides. And the bottom line is he didn't realize it's a wetland. Well, I want to reiterate, we've come before you voluntarily. We filed to do this. We filed to fix this. No, I understand, Mike. I'm asking questions. Please yep, calm I down. I mean, you, Attorney Madeline and Mark and I have had discussions. You know where I stand on this. I'm just asking questions. I over and over and over again ask for you to, to make the numbers very easy so the commission can make a determination. I was focused, I thought you were focused on the numbers under the notice of intent. That's, Mike. That was a misunderstanding on my part. Well, then maybe I should tape record our discussions when we're sitting in a little conference room next time. I mean, come on, Mike. Anyway, before the board is the presentation that was made, Mr. Chairman, you're going to have to decide whether you want to open the notice as well or make a determination on the enforcement and the um, compliance because I truly believe that you need to settle that because basically where the proposed driveway reconfiguration is goes directly into where that original wetland was. Um, I, I agree with you, Jen. You, know, yeah. you light table it out, the pink is where the original wetland was, and in the board's defense, Mike, I do think I do believe that they have to put the original wetland on your plan. So we did it with our light table. And now the pink is the original wetland as um, marked out by LEC. And then we color coded the blue where you're proposing it and everything. So the board does need to make a decision. I'm just trying to get the numbers right. And just one other question on the, on the buffer, Mike. Um, you're offering. So the buffer for 1884, because we did issue compliance on the two other ones, the non-compliance on the flow, so those are settled. 
So the only really outstanding one besides the non-compliance on the float is the 1884. And humor me, and what were those numbers again? For the buffer that was required for the seawall, which was the buffer required for the house that stuck on the seawall border. But <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I don't have that number with me. I presented it last time, and then in our discussions in between the hearings, you said that you thought that that area had been rolled into the um, enforcement action. So well, originally they rolled it into the enforcement action, but I also said color code your plan, show the buffer for 1884 in purple, show the area I don't that remember. you're proposing I, in I. I I don't remember those specific requests. I have nothing else to say, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Courtney, we'll, we'll open up the board for some questions here and then we'll um, make a decision. I realize that um, Betsy and I are not on the quorum because we weren't at the first hearing. However, Betsy and I have cumulative experience that goes back to when this was an issue with an enforcement order and things like that back in 2005. Um, and this is a very complicated issue, and I think I have a problem personally with all of these things kind of being rolled together. Um, I'm old, and um, I'm just a builder by trade. I'm not an engineer. I'm not a wetland scientist. I'm not any of those things. But I try to sort things out, and I'll draw an analogy. When I was quite young, and that was a long time ago, I used to like to play with all kinds of things. So I would pull toys out and start playing with Lincoln Logs and Erector Sets and so on, and create a minefield in my living room. And then, before I'd finish with that, I'd go to my cubby and pull out another pile of toys. And at one point, my mother, in her great wisdom, God rest her soul, said to me, Son, that's enough. Pick up, if you want to get new toys out, you've got to pick up all the other ones and put them away, and then you can start with a new one. And I thought at the time, that was a, she was an awful, awful person to do that and deprive me of those things. But, you know, that was pretty good advice. It's finish up tasks that you've started, clean up your mess, and then you can come and start doing something else. And I think that's what we are, should be considering here. We have an enforcement issue, we have a compliance issue, and I don't think this board should consider anything else until those things are wrapped up, until the enforcement issue has been complied with fully, that the um, outstanding order conditions, um, compliance issue has been complied with and done, finished, fixed, signed off, approved, recorded, and then come in with your proposed project. I mean, it makes life simpler for the landowner, and it makes life simpler for us. And I think if we, if we don't, if we get these things all boiled in together, you're back to the living room full of toys that everybody's falling over. Uh, Laurie. I would have to concur without as much bloviating as... <laughs> Court, but I personally, I was on the board when this was a violation. Uh, under Deegan, I can name a few of us that were on it. Um, I was actually quite surprised to see it was still here. Um, I was hoping I didn't ever have to see it again. But I'm here, and it's back. Um, I personally, as a commissioner, have seen when things get overlapped and things get boiled together in a pot and the toys on the floor, and it gets very confusing. Um, not only for staff, for the contractors for everybody. I would like to see the enforcement and the compliance be separated from the notice 
Let's clean up the, make it, fix it up, get it done, then it's done, and then move forward. Mr. Chairman, um, first off, Courtney can't sit on this because he wasn't here for the first hearing. He's not voting. He's not voting. The answer that Jennifer asked was the total that I had identified before in Exhibit 1 was 14,250 no. square wait, feet. Wait, wait, hold on. Hold on. 14,200. It's on Exhibit 1 that was submitted at the first. Mike, come on. I have like 800 paperwork. Give me a number, please. 14,250 square feet. 50 square feet. And that was for 1884. That was the 35-foot average along the north okay. side. side. the And when I'm at with you, and I, I know what, I know your, your, your other presentation and everything, and when I met with the three of you, I asked very clearly, multiple times to color code it out. So then you have, and you did so in the wetland area, that was great. You have your wetland area there and there, and that's what you're proposing for the square feet of the replication. But the buffer, I thought it would be easier for the board to see on your, I'm going to go, I, I, I wasn't privy to your little PowerPoint here, so I can't. So if you go to number three, when you go to number three. No, I want to say three. So if you go to three and you see where your proposed buffer is, Mike? Yes. The darker green ones, if you could just maybe take 14,250 square feet of that and make it blue, that would give the board a visual on what you're doing, on this is where I'm going to replicate that buffer. That's all I asked. Okay. And it was very clear the multiple times I asked it, even though you don't remember. And I won't tell you. Oh, I, I don't remember any colors. Uh, Richard and I, on behalf of the applicant, I remember asking for distinction. I don't remember specific And I will colors. be having witnessed it in with these gentlemen <laughs> in the near future. Because we did show Sir, could you go up to the podium, please? It's so I said, Mr. N Attorney Nyland, I specifically Hang on, Jen. Hang on, Jen. Let him get up there. And Sorry, I, uh, Richard Nyland, on behalf of the applicant. Thank you. Uh, you know, I, I think we're getting off on the wrong foot here. When we were here in front of you last time, most of the time we spent talking about off-site versus on-site replication and restoration. That dominated the discussion. We went back and spoke to Jen a couple of times to see if there's any way we could do off-site. And we never, so we, what we've done, the most important thing that we've done is we've now taken all of the um, buffer and wetlands that were uh, altered and not built, not constructed, and we're doing everything on-site. There's nothing off-site. So in, during those discussions, Jen was very clear. She wanted us to make sure, first of all, that the, the sites were combined, and we are going to do that, and I've written a letter to that effect. What well, that is, 152 and 160 will be combined. Yeah. Okay. And second, she wanted us to make sure that one could follow exactly how much wetland was altered and how much was going to be replicated or restored. Correct. She certainly said colors. I don't remember purple versus blue, and I don't think that matters, it doesn't right? Matter. All that matters is that you can distinguish see where you between. Are. Right. And, I, and the last thing I want to say is. And you can't we don't have any problem with going first with compliance. Yeah. I think Mike's position is there are other things that we're going to do with a notice that are helpful, mm -hmm. but they don't have to be. We, we, we can deal with the compliance and the enforcement matter, the COCs first. We can, we can do that. There are, all, there are beneficial, beneficial um, measures and mitigation measures that we're adding in the notice that go in the big picture, because that's what we're trying to look at here is the big picture out here. So. But we can do exactly what the commission wants, which is to deal with the enforcement order and the certificates before we do the notice of it. But the lots aren't combined, correct? The lots are not yet, no, because that's going to be a condition. Uh, that, that will be a condition of your plan that we now, can combine. Do you, do you create another issue, Mike? Uh, you might be more familiar with it, I don't know, with the town bylaws about two residents on one lot. Yeah, we, we've, we've talked about that. We're, there's going to be a guest house, so it's not going to be a single family. So that, I mean, we're working that out with the accountant in terms of how we, we um, 
we actually merge because it's going to you gonna create one. another nonconformity, and that's a whole nother issue, and the lot would never get combined. So that's cor and correct. I think you know the, the, the lots. There'll be two lots up, but they're going to be under the same ownership. That's the key: is the lots are under the same ownership, the same right? Time. And yeah. that's what we're going to do. So, so, so lot so 152 will be conveyed. I'm sorry to interrupt. Will be conveyed to uh, a trust. It's going to be a different trust because Mr. Hines has asked that the, the name is no longer on because he doesn't own it any longer. But the, both 152 and 160 will be owned by the same party. But not combined. But not combined. See, combined is a merger. That's a, that's a, that's a question know, of law. Well, that, that's, that's what the, we're having trouble with, you know. And, and again, at some point he could sell that other piece of property, correct? With the mitigation on it. But it would be a guess. 152. No, it's but, but at some point, if it wasn't considered all one lot, okay, he could sell that piece. You know, well, we, maybe we don't like the guest house anymore, and I'm going to sell. It's two different. He could do that, right? No, because, well, he could, but the intention is to raise that structure. Once he raises that structure, any grandfathering is gone, so that 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 will eliminate the ability to sell off that lot for, for a single family purpose. Um, it could, I don't, I, don't, yeah. I, I kind of disagree with that. Yeah. I, okay. I would think you could sell it off and somebody could come back and say, you know, now we're gonna throw a kitchen in there. You know, even though it's the calling of the studio, I believe, mm -hmm. is the way I saw it. Studio or guest house. Right, so now I, it becomes another residence, correct? Oh, oh but I, 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 think, think, I think that's a separate no, I question. understand. That. The issue is, yes, is, is there sufficient area on the site, 152 and 160, to take care of buffer and wetland restoration and revocation? How that's ultimately on, as long as that's on the plan and that's enforceable, really doesn't matter who owns it. We're, we're going to take steps so it's owned by the same party. But you're right, I, I can't tell you what's going to happen. He could subdivide it differently. So, uh, you know, so same issue. So what's most important is do we have a restriction on here so that we know that the work is going to be done? Mike, I think you were up next. Um, it took me longer than I liked to see where initial problems arose where that wetland was filled. But after having done that, I'm, I'm pretty sure that Mr. McGrath is correct. The area is right. So that we have the area that was before us. We know what they are. We can mop it out and see where it is. Um, it's, I have some oddball questions, but I, I see where might have a problem, and the, which means we have a problem, in that for reasons that aren't clear to me, there's a change in the railroad and the entranceway, the shifting thing around, and that's going to impact whether you do that restoration or not. I mean, it, if you're not going to move the road, you get one issue, and if you're going to move the road, you get another issue. And I don't know quite how you can, I can sit here and say, making moving that road make sense or not without hearing that portion of the presentation. So it is, they are married together. And um, the notion that, the, uh, that we can solve one without un understanding the other piece is a little confusing to me. So I'm, I'm at the, uh, we have to, I think we have to procedurally thought out as to how to go through it, because it is clear to me that we have to have the areas we needed, they have to be on that property, we have to have to correct the <coughs> sins of the past, if you want to put it that way. And clearly, you know, the, the willingness to take out that very nice clay court certainly shows a willingness to move forward. So I'm, I'm wide open to how, to how to proceed, but I do think, I don't know, I'm not quite sure that we can just fix one without understanding the other. Okay. 
my in my opinion, <laughs> sorry, cut you off, Betty. Betsy, but I, I'm I, I kind of agree that I think what happened on 160 needs to be taken care of first, and then we can proceed to the notice. I I agree with Courtney's description of what happened here, or and and I think. In, in my mind, anyway, I think that's where we should, we should proceed. We should keep it with Lot 160, take care of this issue first, and then go to the next step. That, to me, that's the way, that's my thinking on it. Okay. Um, Mike, just so you know, Betsy and Courtney are not on the quorum, but when we check with town council, they can comment or question. It doesn't make any difference. If, if I didn't think so, I would have raised yeah. an objection. Yeah, so, yeah. I just, I, I was trying to answer Mike's, we, we, Mike kind of had a concern. Betsy. You're up. Okay, just to give a little <coughs> historical perspective to the four of you who weren't on the board at the time, this dealing with this enforcement issue took over uh, a process of about six months with four to five hearings, and we we worked hard and thought about precedent and thought about enforcement orders, and frankly. I would have been a lot happier if this enforcement order had been satisfied 10 years ago, but it hasn't. And um, I, we had a, Mike prepared a, a good plan. Um, there was going to be, the wetlands were going to be restored, and Mike told us earlier this evening that in the 30 years from when this this uh, map that he just showed us from 1977 to when we had the enforcement hearing, hearing in, in 2005, that sea level probably rose about four inches. So that wetland probably was a little soggier then than it was back in 1977. And um, um, so number one, I would like to see that enforcement plan uh, accomplished and then and the second aspect of it is part of that enforcement plan was buffer that had to be restored and I think that buffer should be restored on lot 160 it's it's even if there's same ownership I know you had discussions in the meeting that Courtney and I weren't on with having mitigation on some far away lot but having mitigation on the adjacent lot is not satisfactory. Mitigation for activities on lot 160 should be on 160. Everyone else who comes before us has to provide mitigation on their lot for any activities on that lot. That's my comment. Mary. Um, I don't know that I have anything new to say, but I feel like we're going to kind of catch 22 because I agree that procedurally we should deal with the enforcement order on its own, but I also agree with Mike that there's really no way to understand what it is we would be approving or, or disapproving without getting into the discussion of the NOI. Um, and the only other point I would make, we were talking about what would prevent this other piece from being sold off separately at some point. And I think if I understand things correctly, if the project were taken to the point of joining up the septic system, that would prevent it, I think. And that's sort of, yeah. the septic. They, there is no place to put another septic. That's why they're doing this. That's all I have right now. Jamie. <coughs> Interesting point. Yes. Russ. <coughs> what if they sort? Jamie. Uh, I can't add anything. Okay. Courtney, something else? Um, <clears throat> I think one of the advantages, and, and I think we're all trying to get to the same place, and I appreciate that you are kind of sympathetic to the position that you know maybe the if, if this is what we want the enforcement issues compliance issues get cleared up first 
and and in a way that's perhaps beneficial for you as well because clearly there's an issue about whether or not under zoning and other things that have nothing to do with conservation you can combine these lots and um, what are the implications if they can't be and so forth and how does that influence what you construct and present before us and so I I think in a sense um, these issues even though they're not within our purview um, these issues kind of need to be clarified and maybe the, the, the time spent for you now to clear up the um, enforcement order and compliance issues also a lot buys you some time to sort out what you can do with the two lots and that would influence how you construct what you would like to propose to do Lauren we as Betsy commented that we um, spent a lot of time on this back in 2005 and six um, and you know we did our homework it was a, a solid plan it was pretty much agreed that that's the steps we were going to go forward with and we're kind of redoing this again and I just don't understand my time is very valuable I sit here as a volunteer and I already did this I already you know did the dance for this one and I just feel that if we go back to the old enforcement pull out the file all the answers are there we don't have to redo this um, again and again and again and I have looked at all the plans and I do understand there's a lot of merit and a lot of benefits and improvements to the site with things that you're, you're <coughs> proposing. But my major concern is that the precedent it will set, that people will start filling wetlands and saying, you know what, we're, we really want our house here, so we're gonna fill this over here. But And I know you can replicate and make new wetlands. It's not a hard thing to do. Dig a hole in your yard and you have turtles and frogs in a week. Um, it's just the fact that then it just says you can move, you can do what you want, and play the game of where you're going to put the new wetland. And it's not that I'm trying to be, you know, you know, slap you on the wrist and you have to do it. But we discussed this a long time ago. And the wetland was there. The wetland should be put back there. It's the closest area to the resource than, the, than what you're proposing, um, where the old one was. And I just don't know why we're spending a lot of people's very precious time that they don't get compensated for except to do the right thing for the environment to continue on and on and on down this road. Staff has recommended that we separate it. I usually err with staff. I think that they have done a lot more legwork than I have when I just come tonight or when I did my site work. So I'm going to I'm going to run with the professionals that are staff that have done this and and hope that we vote to keep this separated because once you go and you start mixing this all up, I'm going to tell you, it's going to be a, if you think you're going to be here long tonight, wait until you get through these two combined with the overlays that we, you know, that it's, it's going to be even more confusing. Mike, did you have something before I go to Jen? Um, yeah. Uh, You know, the geotechs have an expression that says there's water under the dam, you know? Um, and I don't, I don't I, there's wisdom in moving forward, but what we really want to do is what's best for the resources. Exactly. And, uh, and I'm, I can't tell you that going back to a plan 10 years ago doesn't fit, is it is, is well or is, is it protective of what they're proposing. I, 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 I can't tell you. So I'm, you know, I'm still. That's why we have staff. That, okay. okay, Jen. Just to clarify something, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that you need to evaluate whether or not the proposed wetland replication and the proposed buffer that is being proposed to you satisfies this board enough to grant compliance. I have never said, put the well back, well, I have my own opinion, but to go back to that plan. The reason that I asked Mr. McGrath, Attorney Lyons, and Mr. Manganiello to color code in whatever colors they wanted, the numbers for you is so that you could visually see it. So I don't have to sit there on my little yellow pad, hope my math is right, 
crunching the numbers for you. So, you have your wetland replication. So one, for the enforcement order, the board needs to determine where the applicant's representative cited the proposed replication on 160 and the small portion on 150 would satisfy you in terms of the area that was filled before. Second, for the buffer of 1884, we needed 14,250 square feet of buffer land, in which on lot 160, they proposed 1,680. Okay, so that leaves a difference of 2,570. I'll be really embarrassed if my mouth is wrong on camera, but it could be. So we jump over to 152 where they're proposing to remove 5,300 square foot of invasive, and we're going to put the remaining buffer there. That's what I'm saying you need to evaluate. That's why I'm saying it's important. And I understand where Mike, I understand how Mike thinks and that you want to see all the moving parts, and I get that. But it's important for you to make a determination. And you guys can open this second hearing, it doesn't matter to me, to understand that where that new driveway is going is where the old wetland is. And if the board um, decides to grant compliance on the enforcement in 1880, then let's just go forward with the notice. It, it, I'm not making a determine either way. I'm just trying to make the numbers and the, the visual effects easy for this board to determine. So you guys can determine whatever you would like to do. Um, but they have proposed this to take care of the enforcement order. And I think it's really simple. Does the board agree with the wetland replication that is being proposed for um, to replace what was done back in 2005? And again, does the buffer requirements from 1884, and that's DEP number 25, 1884, not the year 1884, does that, the buffer that they're proposing by removing the um, tennis court, does that satisfy that? Going forward, the board needs to know that they're using part of the removal of the tennis court for their calculations for the new patios. That's why I wanted it color coded. Is so there wasn't this blending of buffer and impervious surface being removed and everything like that. That is where I was getting at when I had the discussions with the applicant's representative. Just to clarify that. I don't think it's as confusing as maybe, but I'll let Michael address. Um, I'm not sure how many people have been to the site, but the entire perimeter of the site on Great Harbor is ringed with a solid uh, concrete wall. Um, and so when I look at the purposes of the buffer, it seems to me that the buffers that are shown here are superior to uh, the buffers that could be constructed around the, the perimeter of the seawall. Could we now go to the slide that shows all the resource area buffers on the site? Um, there is a step. What happens here is that we have a large site, I think it's 3.8 acres on the main 160, and we have slightly over an acre on 152. And what I've done is I've added the resource area A and the resource area B. And what is interesting about this is we have a very strange shape to the peninsula that juts out into uh, Great Harbor. And the blue areas, there's a blue area in the middle of the house, and then there's a blue area up at the tennis court that are the only areas outside of uh, 
your resource area buffers. So when I look at the size of this parcel, this parcel, because of its shape and the existing um, resources, there's very little land that's not inside the resource areas. And when I consider that your goal is to have the complete resource area A filled it over time, um, that is a significant burden as far as the value of this land is. The, the value of the two parcels are 11.5 acres assessed. So this is a little different and, yeah, 11.5 million, I'm sorry. Uh, so when I look at everything that's going on here, when I consider about the new resource area buffers that are enhancing and, um, and creating a wildlife corridor along uh, Penzance Road, I think it's more important than having a shallow or some strip of land all the way around the back of the concrete wall. As far as the difference in the wetlands, the, the, to me, the two configurations are of the new replication are also to try and create, one of the things that we actually do is we create more resource area A's and more resource area B uh, in order to, to get the, uh, the, the and, and so we're creating actually more jurisdiction for you. <laughs> and as far as I'm concerned, I believe that the value of this wetlands that we're showing, and again, all of the wetland area on 160 is placed on 160. So um, I, I believe that, uh, that uh, based on our experience, we can make a wetland there that uh, will have the same value as in the original uh, shape. We've come before you, um, and I want to keep saying it, we've come before you voluntarily to resolve all these things, and I hope that you will let the owner reconfigure this the way that we've shown it. I think we've worked hard to get here. I realize there may have been a miscommunication between Jennifer and us, but the bottom line is there's more than enough uh, buffer. If you need it to be adjusted a little bit, we can easily adjust it, but we've worked hard at getting here. So, um, I know there were two people that weren't here before, but we've worked hard to get here. Um, so Mike, Mike I, just a comment. The, see what the RAA is? I walked that, pro the entire property, okay, all around that. Yep. And you stand in that area, that ground was really soft. I could walk away towards the existing driveway, and the ground would get harder and harder and harder. To me, why aren't you restoring that one area, adding that piece? Because to me, I think that was the wetlands that were all filled in. It was. It was. It was. And, and again, it was so really soft. Right in this area, there's a soft area. Yeah, yeah I, and it, I, I mean, it's a good piece of it, Mike. I walked the whole thing back, and then I walked up, you know, north and south and east and west. That, in all honesty, that I think I don't know how to say this, that the trench that, at the edge of the lawn, there's a trench down to the hedge. And I have been out there a lot, and I don't remember it being flooded the way it's been flooded. So I understand what you're saying. But it wasn't as bad in the past. Um, I think you know there's been an article that the water's, mean high water's five inches more or less higher because the Gulf Stream's changed direction and stacking the water up. Mm -hmm. So I understand what you're saying. Uh, but, I mean, the most important thing is that we're here to try and work this out, and, um, and that's, I want to make sure you understand, we filed. The only reason we're here is we filed to be here. So, as I said before, there was mistakes on both sides, and uh, we don't need to go into the different mistakes, but I'm hoping that the commission will give us um, I actually hope you open up the hearing on the notice of intent because I don't see, frankly, how we can do the work without a notice, to be blunt. Uh, but that's a different story. Yeah, under the notice, there is a scheduled volunteer to 
on how to do the construction of the wetlands that's different than whatever would exist in the past, so it would seem to me more appropriate to open up the notice and look at the entire picture, and it's not that confusing. <laughs> if I can understand it anyway, sure. Betsy, you have another comment? Okay. Or question? I, I am a coastal scientist, and despite what you said, Maury, it's easy to dig a hole in the ground and have water there and you'll have some animals come back. But wetlands replication is actually not very easy. And it takes a long time, even with doing a good job with wetlands re replication, to, to have it succeed. to succeed and to have it you know, viable as it may have been in the past, given 30 years time has passed. Um, but I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'm, my biggest concern with this is this was a major enforcement issue in the past. And if you go ahead with this notice of intent, and, and I, I don't vote on any of these, but if you go ahead with a notice of intent, basically you're saying you're going to put that new road in. It's okay to fill the wetland. So the part of the wetland where the new road is proposed is, is it's, that's okay. That was okay to do that filling. And it's, this wasn't the only project this week. We had several projects where people found the wetland resources inconvenient for what they might want to do. Most of the people in town understand the value of the wetland or, or at least acknowledge that we're trying to protect the environment. And um, the, these cases of, of enforcement orders, which everybody here hates enforcement orders. I think it's caused the most angst among commission members. But when there is a violation and the applicant works with us for six months to come up with an acceptable uh, solution for that, and then does nothing for 10 years. It's, it's, it's discouraging. Well, you missed the first hearing, and one of the things I said, and of course Jennifer challenged me at the time, is there are times when there are invisible wetlands and the perfect example is the ball field and woods in Woods Hole. I dug a hole in the ball field and woods hole, and there's hydric soil. It's a wetland. And one of the problems with that is that while we know it's a wetland, where the hell is the resource area in the A and resource area B? So here we have a, a unique situation where, where the, the ground is pretty low and a mistake was made. There's no question a mistake was made. And we've said it. And so we've come before you to alter basically the wetland because I believe that uh, one of the things you missed too is that we filed a notice of intent to do some work around, um, there was a notice of intent and an RDA to do some work at the uh, former Bellamy Country Club now called the uh, Cape Club. And I did all the permitting in the 80s. There were no wetlands on the entire site. It was gone over with a fine tooth comb, and now there's five wetlands. So there are, um, there are wetlands that are made by man, and it, uh, and uh, so I, I understand exactly what you're saying. There's a study on buffers to rivers. And the most important buffer is not wooded. It's actually the wetlands. So, and it doesn't take much of a wetlands to protect the quality of a river. So the bottom line is that we can create a wetland. Will it have the same subsurface conditions? Not for a while. Um, most of the traditional wetlands in Cape Cod have bog iron the edges, and it will take a while for a bog iron you could, to develop it. They're, you could tell it was boggy as you walked across it. Pardon me? You could tell the bog. lawn is boggy underneath it. It's soft. There's no question. Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Okay. My yes, sir. What's the square footage of the tennis court being removed? The whole tennis court is uh, 7,200 square feet, I believe. 7,200? Uh, more or less. More or less? Okay. Yeah. I'm going and by I, have, I have one other question. I have a question on, and I don't know if this, you have this calculated out, but you stated it, so I'm going to ask you the question. On the little area of wetland that's across the other side of the driveway, <coughs> what square foot of wetland is on 160 and what square foot of wetland is on 162? I don't know if you calculated that. 
that out, Mike. That might be. But you said you were placing it entirely on 160. And I know that that law. Uh, just go back. Go back. This is what this is put on. Um, we. Yeah. We. Right. Come back to that. Not, that There's 9,240 square feet that are required to be um, constructed on number 160. There's 9,260 square feet that's all on 160. That's all. So that so, whole dotted line. Right. Okay. And so there's a proposed alteration that's in purple and yep. this yep. area is okay. the same as that area. Okay. Just trying to get this straight in my head. All right. That's why I asked for and then Courtney, and then we're going to go to the voting members and see what their pleasure is. What I want to do with this? Go ahead, Court. Um, <clears throat> Patsy and I both were on the commission ten years ago. And Court and uh, Maury. Oh, I'm sorry. Is Mike? Is it Maury. Maury. Oh, Maury. I'm sorry. No, no, but go ahead. Uh, no, no, I wasn't going to speak. Oh, okay. I was saying oh. she was on. The I three was of us. Yeah. Were on. So, the point is that yeah. there was numerous hearings on this issue, and there was a lot of give and take between the commission and your your folks as to the scope, the size, the shape, and all of that. We spent a lot of time, and I'm sure you did. You did too. So a lot of resources and effort was spent. And, and the result was an enforcement order that provided for that restoration. And I believe it was all on, on the lot on which the violation occurred. Now, for whatever reason, it wasn't done. So I'm not going there because it's just that's not appropriate. But now, it's, and, and it should have been done. And in my mind, even though I can't vote in this particular situation, in my mind, that replication should be done according to the terms of that enforcement order that was agreed on by you folks. And then, once that's done, it's time for you to come in with the next deal. Uh, okay. Again, you weren't here for the first hearing. I said mistakes were made. We had hearings in 2005. You didn't issue the approval of right, the Mike, I think, action. I, I think uh, we've heard this before, Mike. 2009. He hasn't heard it. Yes. He's going to hey, comment. He's not, he should, I don't know that you guys took four He is four not five part minutes. of the quorum, okay? And, and I believe you just said the same thing over and over again. I think we're getting repetitive no, here. We're getting back I and back. I never said till now that in this hearing that you didn't issue the enforcement action for four or five years after the hearing. Okay. That's it? Four or five years after the hearing. That's what you're okay. That's right. I'm going to throw you to Jen. I just had one question. Good morning. Jen. Jennifer. Jennifer. Um, there was a, Mr. McGrath said that they were going to put um, some of the replication in an area that was invasive, am I correct? Uh, and that would count because we usually okay. That that that's part of the issue that I was was gonna get to. Oh, okay. Before you know, okay. okay. Wasn't All right. Particularly laid out as I would have liked. Okay. Um. That was a question I was gonna have for.
260 on that minus the 830 for that piece. So that's, so yeah, more. You have more or less, again, my numbers could be a little off. I'm doing this. 930. No, 5,730 square feet, Mark. Does that sound right between that area and that? Right here. That and going into that hash mark, yes. That's yeah. all invasives in that, correct? Or predominantly uh, invasives. You can't really see the existing driveway. Okay, the driveway's in there. Yeah, so, right. uh, I got the existing driveway right here. I, I know I have it. So, are you looking for the square footage of wetland replication that's in a vegetated yeah. area? Yes. Yes. I believe it's 830 yeah, square feet. That's what I said, 830. 800, 8, well, that's the wetland, yeah, more or less 830. And so out of 10,000. So then 10, the offers 5,300. 5, yes. Thank you. Sorry about that. I was a little, I was getting way too caught up in the numbers. And then, well, there, there is some discrepancy in the numbers that we have here. They're very small, and I don't want to get antagonistic about it because... I think they're, the numbers are greater than what's required, and the discrepancies are in the neighborhood of 10, 15 feet here and there, but different plans, some by Homes and McGrath, some by LEC, don't all say the same thing for the same area. Um, so... Well, just to keep this moving right now, yep. yeah, yeah, okay. I think it's you good. either have to decide to... to to determine whether you're going to issue compliance based on the proposal before you, which offers the buffer mitigations and everything like that, and the wetland replication, okay, or, um, or not, or to open the hearing. And then combine the two, wouldn't you be doing that? Yeah, and I'll call, the only concern I have is if, and the board can do whatever they want, if you choose to open the hearing, then I would suggest you'll need a continuance for the hearing so that the buffer mitigation that's being satisfied from 1884 is not recounted for that. So they'll have to redo the plan. And that is where my concern is. That's why I'm really pushing for these different visuals and everything is so that the tennis court, which is being removed, to provide 1,680 of the 14,250 square feet of buffer planting for 25-1884 is then not used as That's an impervious surface requirement for 160 or 152, and I just want, and it may not be, I don't know, so I just want to make sure the numbers are right. So, that's, you can move forward with the compliance, you can open the notice, but just, that's, that's just the staff statement. Okay. Um, can, before we, go ahead, Jesse. Uh, Mark. Yes. The, the, uh, proposed buffer areas, except for where the court is, and maybe there's a little bit where the road is, that's all, that's not new uh, woody vegetation. That's replacing uh, vegetation that's there, but is primarily invasive. Is that what you're offering for buffer? It's this area right here has vegetation presently. Right. In this area right here. So how do you count them? Everything else in here is either lawn, tennis court, or driver. Okay, so so most of those areas or let's say half of what you're offering as buffer is really already vegetated. It's it's vegetated, yes. But like I said, well, no, it's that's, dominated that my by non native invasive species. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then the last question I had for Mark. Um, the areas that you're um, going to do the replication, where we are in the in the restoration, because um, I think they're two different. Where the old wetland was, yes. you're going to be restoring that. 
and then you're going to be replicating. Um, where the court is and in areas, will they, um, can it be a new area be created because of the soils and have there been, have you investigated that? Yeah, I think it's actually um, suitable. It, it does slope up gently from the actual wetland up into the tennis court area, but as you all know, this area has generally shallow groundwater, so by excavating the um, surface down a foot 18 inches, you get to within 12 inches of groundwater. You bring in the proper soil mixture and you bring in the wetland plants and yes, I think it'll work quite well there. Good morning. Could I also speak? Um, I'm not exactly sure what year, but somewhere in like 1994, 1995, I pockmarked that place with test holes. Um, the only permeable soils were underneath the uh, cul-de-sac where the stacked rock system was. So it was, it was at that time slower than 60 minutes per inch um, practically everywhere on the site. Well, maybe you should submit those in the file. Well, well, sure if you state I you have did. them, it's one of the problems. <laughs> well, when people say they did things, we all did things, but it's nice to have them on record to know if you did, what the results were. I'm just making a point. I, I have no idea Sorry. where they are, to be blunt. We've lost a huge amount of our files because of a software company with a bankrupt we can't get into a, some of the scan things. So okay. you're going to have to take my word for it. Okay. All right. So before we move on, can, Betsy, could you read the uh, quorum for me, for the record? Okay. Jamie, Mary, Russ, Mike, Maury. Okay. I would like to make a motion that we separate the enforcement and the COC from the notice and address this and get it cleaned up. Second. We have a motion and a second to continue with the enforcement separate, correct? Correct. All right. Discussion? Just a second, just a second. So we have Maury and Mary. Comments? Questions? What do we mean by that? Are we saying that we're going to require the restoration that was proposed in no, I think, if I can clarify, I think that means you're just going to take two separately. Yeah, separately instead of combining them. And, and, then, then. and then you will need to determine whether or not this plan satisfies okay. right. those requirements. Yeah, no, I didn't take that to mean. No, no, no. no, 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 no I kept wondering what I'm voting on. No, 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 I know what you're I think that the, the, the thing is, is because the, they've asked to, to, to open them simultaneously, I think the board just says, no, we want to keep them separate. Right, fine. Then you um, have to take another well, vote to determine whether this I didn't plan satisfies I'm those right requirements. I'm not sure we'll stay there, but yeah. right now we have. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You good, Mike? I'm good. All right. So any other comments from board members? I don't think I have to go public with this. Okay. We're going to call for the vote. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. Unanimous. Well, so moved. So we're going to keep them separate. Okay. So now I think you need to talk about the merits of the proposed wetland replication and whether or not you feel that satisfies the enforcement order and also whether the proposed buffer mitigation, um, which is on both 160 and 152 satisfies the requirements of 251884, which required the 14250 um, for um, native um, bayberry to be planted, although this isn't bayberry, but um, different area. Just the, the square footage whether it means that. That's for you guys to have a discussion. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, we need a positive. Uh, can I add something? Is it a, 
this the appropriate time to discuss anything about the replication? This is the time to yeah, discuss okay. the replication. Yeah, okay. I mean, other than just, or, or is the square footage set? No, no. The, 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 you get the square footage, whether what, what configuration it takes on the lot, that's going to be completely up to this board. So this is now the time to talk about the replication. Comments, questions? I'm digesting right yeah. now. Mike? Yeah, I'll, I'll start with a, with a comment. I take um, In concept, yeah. I think we got it. We, you know, the, we, we've got the, the area, we come back. But I think the devil is in the detail. And, you, you got to sort out. Uh, there's some things I quite frankly don't understand about why they're going and where it's not. So I'm I'm not sure how you move this thing forward. I, I'm I, I'm I, you know I think an area in where you are because we with the understanding and I, I don't quite understand the legal. Indications we now have it all on one property. Well, that was what the the enforcement issue was originally issued for, correct? But for 160, so correct. 160. 160. So the vote we just took was the deal with 160, which is the enforcement order we're working on here. And then we don't have the error. Correct. So I guess the discussion has no, to be. No, no, I think no. no. We have the we square footage have the area. on 160. Yes, you have the area down with the little. Right. Weird-looking J, J and, right, you, yeah, and yeah. then the area underneath the hash mark right. up there. That's yeah. what I was trying to get at, guys. Yeah. That yeah. area yeah. takes care of the, the 9,240 right square feet. Right. 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 So right. 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 it's all on one section. This piece isn't all on that. Right. That was hoping they can pull it down into here. Oh, it is. Here's a lot line. Maybe not. Here's a lot line. 9,250 square feet. Here's a lot line. Right. There's a little piece in the other lot. Yes. It's all on 160. Yeah, right, but it just doesn't appear like it. Okay, all right. Which is, is the 9,000. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, now I see it. All right. Yeah, they have Property it. lines, what mustn't be okay. up here. Yeah. No, they have it on 160. Okay. But they don't have the buffer. Correct. That's a separate. What was that? They don't have the buffers. Well, buffer's part of. Well, okay. That's so a different. That, so now, so you have two issues, two compliance issues. <coughs> all your other compliance issues was dealt with. So now you, the wetland replication square footage for square footage is on 160. It does not take the same form it did before, but square footage for square footage, they have it. And Mr. Mangamello has ensured us that he can create a wetland where um, that U shape is. Now, for 25-1884, they were required to put 14,250 square feet of buffer plantings. Mike, is that number correct? That's what you calculated? I'm That's going by your numbers, Mike. It's an exhibit two that was submitted. Uh, the original you. one. Yeah. Okay. Where was um, it? One of the things that I want to make sure, we're not counting the Rosa Ragosa, but there's a very substantial band of Rosa Ragosa all behind the wall. Correct, and the original order of conditions did state that you needed to plant bayberry, correct? That's true, but the, the reality is that the Rosa Ragosa has survived in, a, in an area that is got a unique shape and it's subject to constant um, exposure to salt water, so those plants have survived. Out of curiosity, Mike, and you may or may not have did you calculate the area of Rosa Ragosa that exists on the property? Uh, no, I don't have that. No. Okay. I do not have any. So, the 14,250, which was required, this is so not fun, uh, for 25, 1884, you have a proposing any bigger plant. 
Here. No, no, I can hold it. I don't want you. You guys can keep that. You are proposing eleven thousand six hundred and sixty of the asthma by removing the tenants court. And that will be the buffer mitigation for eighteen eighty four. So then you are short I I know I did this. Two two thousand five hundred and seventy square feet of buffer for a board that lots of square footage is. And that is added on to buffer area number one, thank you, Mark, at the top. Which that area of buffer is 5,300 square feet. And I just did that calc. So that leaves an extra 2,730 gallons. Um, so the buffer mitigation, but that that 2,570 that's not on 160 is removing the predominantly invasive. The area that's predominantly invasive and restoring it with buffer, which is something that this board usually normally does not accept to remove invasives to restore buffer. And that's for Mark. <laughs> and the presentation that uh, I believe LEC submitted documentation that they felt that the restored buffer would provide a larger, uh, more wildlife habitat, a better quality of wildlife habitat than the existing buffer. That is something that this board, um, again, with no disrespect to Mr. Manganiello, has not generally accepted in the past because although the invasives are bad, they do provide cover food source. Courtney. I guess it's fortunate for the applicant that I'm not on the quorum. Oh. <clears throat> but what I would say is my first impulse would be to say there was a provision for buffer plantings, 14,000 feet or whatever it was in the original order so what's the big deal in not complying with that just plant it case closed it's done it's all on 160. now that said he is proposing to do 11,000 and change by removing the tennis court on one on 160 yeah. and planting it and that tennis court mr mcgrath said is seven Thousand two hundred more or less, Mike. Right. That's right. Thank you. Well, w whatever the square footage is that this a new buffer because the planning is out, I'm I can buy into that personally if I were voting. However, I would, I I I have a problem putting buffer on another lot. And and I think that. I, I think the balance of the buffer that doesn't go in the area where the removed move tennis court is should go somewhere on lot 160, and my preference would be to see it go where it was originally proposed. And it doesn't, therefore, muddy any waters. Granted, it may not fit whatever grand plan you have, but um, there's a lot of kind of waters that that you know you guys are going to come back and i mean if you feel that you know the rep if, if, you, if the board's comfortable with the replication that's fine and and so on i'm comfortable seeing that thing get moved around but i think it all needs to stay on one 160 for the purposes of clarity can you squeeze out another 2570 square feet on 160 mike No, what did you say? What was it, I, before, I we, be, before we answer I, that question, I would just like to get an explanation as to the square footage of buffer required. We've been talking about 14,250 square feet, but on this plan and in the LEC summary we were given last week, 
It says 13,846 square feet required. And um, obviously you're talking about a larger number, so I'm not complaining, but I am not comfortable with any of these numbers because of I don't, I don't get what's going on with them. Uh, uh, the numbers here are this plus the difference in the house offs and the loss of the driveway is uh, offsets the increase in curtains here from the little walls the uh, spa and the terrace. So then that says that there's a total of 16,169 buffer towards the 13,846 square feet buffer required. There's more buffer shown than we believe is required. The I understand, solution, but I'm talking about two different numbers we're using for what's required. 14,250 versus 13,846. Um, Mary, I can explain. 14,250, yeah. I didn't mean to get you off mark, is the requirement straight out of 25,1884. I believe the 13, and correct me if I'm wrong, is the calculation. So if you open up the notice and start mm -hmm. doing the impervious service calculus, so blending along them all together. Okay, it's. Uh, I, so you're I wondered if that was it, but there's this other note on there saying there's 991 versus 991, so that's a wash. But there are other things besides the tennis court, I guess, is what we're talking about. Correct. In the big picture, right? <clears throat> Correct. All right. Okay. That's why I was trying Sorry. to keep it very no simple for you. Yes. No, it's okay. clear. 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 Very clear. So we still have the question so of the, the 25. So the question, Mike, can, right. yes. I forgot the question. Yeah. Can the 20, can you, look, can you squeeze another 27? 2,500. 2,500. 2,500. 70. 70. 170. Onto 160. Yeah, 250. Well, well, the easiest solution to that is that we have this long established uh, Rosa Vergosa the whole way through. It's been there. It's very, very thick. It would, as far as I'm concerned, provide most of the offsets that are described in the, uh, the preambles about what's important about buffers. Um, it, it's very healthy in an area that we would have trouble with most, most plants, and there's more than 2,500 square feet for sure. Oh. There's quite a bit of area. There. The only thing the staff would have to check on with that, Mr. McGrath, and that wasn't in honestly, me personally, I'm not the rose the, the, the rose of ghost is not what's concerning me. It's what was there prior to the house project and the seawall project being proposed and what's there now. So what I'm saying is that yeah, you may have the twenty five seventy, but of that twenty of that whatever square footage you have out there, what pre-existed the two orders that are 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 requiring it? So that's something that the staff would need time to research. That we don't know. Well, oh, crap. that buffer could have been And I don't think Mr. 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 McGrath would have to have to research it too. It may it may work out. It may not, Mike, because you tried it before. And what did I tell you? Go back and tell me what was there before. Well, the, the, the trouble is the photographs are so fuzzy. It's very hard to make out anything. Um, so, but if it came down to we needed to create 2,570 square feet, we could create it. And that's what you would need to do, Mike, is look at what was there prior to the issuance of the two orders for the house and the seawall, and then add, add that 2,570 on top of that. Right. And my testimony is there yeah. was plants along there it was very hard to make it up. No, and you and I had that yeah. discussion in the office, and, and, and that's what I said. You're going to have to figure out what was there prior to, and, and one of the, you, may be, you may be able to do it. But I, one I, of the problems we have problem is, is though, if he, if he can't see it in the photographs, I mean, yeah, how do you make that so determination? We have, we have all the old plants. Yes, yeah, but could have required the, a buffer. Okay. The, yeah, we no. The, old plants. the problem is that the... You're, we're so used to detailed plans today, when I go back and look at some of the plans, for instance, when they did the tennis court, it, it doesn't show the vegetation through the entire site. 
So, but uh, when I see the aerial photographs, for instance, there is some apparent vegetation in this area, but I, I, uh, it's hard to make out the exact boundaries of what type of I don't think you'd be able to answer that. I don't yeah. think so. Mike, in all fairness to Mike, he's going to be able to answer that question tonight. But I could get 2,570 you know, square feet on this lot. By looking someplace. at that little green around, I think that would be, it, it would just, he, Mr. McGrath would have to go back and look at the old plans, as would you. That's not something that you're going to be able to determine tonight. What you can determine tonight is that out of that 14,250 square feet that you need to fulfill that outstanding order of conditions, you've got. 80% of it on there already. So we're, we're looking at 80%. Yeah. I mean, that other 20. And it could be done. So I, so I guess, should we talk about continuing this hearing on the enforcement order? You, you, you can't and get the information. So. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna, you're gonna, if you're asking Mr. McGrath to go back right. and see if he can do it, you're going to have to have It's been 10 years. Well, it's fine. Moving forward, the important thing is Mike just said that he would. No, no, I agree. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's been 10 years. So if we have a continuance yeah, so for a month while this gets know, done, that, it's not I, a big I, deal. But yeah. Would that warrant? I want to clarify it. You know what I mean? That's to, and I think Jim's got a good point. Just a little bit of research to clarify it. Yeah. I, so I think I that makes sense. Can we get a sense of where we are in the enforcement order? I think there was a misunderstanding in terms of it all being on 160 for the replication. We've explained that what happened in 2005 didn't go forward until 2009 and we've come back and we've put all the restoration on 160. Is that something that is that the I, I think there's been some progress. For the restoration, the replication, excuse me, and, and some restoration. Attorney yeah. Nyland, I think it's clear to the board that there all of the replication required According to your numbers, do, does appear on lot 160. It's just in a different configuration. And the board's going to have to determine whether or not they accept that configuration <coughs> or not. As far as the enforcement order for the wetland, wetland replication goes, I'm sorry, I'm getting tired. I, it's I, all on one I understand that, but we, we sort of went right into the buffer. And I, I want to make sure that we answered all the questions relative to the replication. The replication, I believe, the, the board's only question was, is it all on 160, and can it physically be done, correct? Yeah, and we've and answered And now you'll have to have, they'll have to have a deliberation of whether or not they accept the reconfigured shape, yes. for lack of a better term. And I think the issue that was asked me is, uh, can we fit 2,570 square feet or 2,600 square feet on 160 and show it on a plane? And correct. And I have to come back to that. Yes. Correct. That's right. And I mean, like you need to look at, you know, what was there before the two orders for that. And you need to look at both those orders, and we can do that. I mean, my preference, and this is just me, I'm going to go along with what every, how everybody else feels about it, but that, again, I'll go back to that um, number four and that RAA area. Soft. It, it just... I mean, I'd prefer to see that wetland more in that area, but that's just my... I don't think you need to. Yeah. I think um, if you want to I, deal with the enforcement now, you can, or if you want to kind of absorb the last hour in 15 minutes, you can do that as well and come back. I mean, you're yeah. going to need a continuance for the, for the compliance for 1884. You can take that and continue the enforcement action as well, or... Settle that now. Perhaps he's giving the, yes. them some guidance yeah. Yeah. before they come back. Yeah. Actually, so, well, if you look, Russ. That, that, er, that. Yes, right here, Russ. Yeah. I'm he knows. Sorry. He knows. Mike, oh, I know. Yeah, no, no, so no, no. your area. Really good, you know what he's talking about, Mike? Our, With the you're big talking RAA like this area right wetland. here. Yeah. So, Mike, he's saying. No, no, no. No, no, no. I think RAA was over in here. Yeah, this, yeah. the pink the is the old yeah. wetland line. Yeah. So, maybe look at this. Kind of. Uh, my. Do that. Yeah, that's a good point, Jim. What I'd like to say is that 
my observations of the saturated area is more here, which when I look at where that is, it seems to be just beyond where the edge of the old wetland is. But what I understand is you'd like to see if we would adjust the replication area in that area. That's, Correct. I believe that's, that's just, what you're that's, asking. That's my I own Mike, when my we own walked preference. yesterday, it was where RAA is all the way up to where you're proposing the new road. The new was, driveway. was boggy. Yeah. I mean, noticeably I, I, I understand boggy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I understand. Mary. Um, I have a question that's related to this. I think it's from Mark. There was some mention in there of this finger-shaped thing and why why it's shaped that way, what the benefit is. Can geothermal wells. Uh, yeah, there are geothermal wells, wells in that. here and here. So oh, that okay, that's work not, work oh, all right, all right. Really just all right. I was thinking of the long, I was looking at the wrong one. Um, and it, one more question while we're on the subject of the replication. I, it struck me that it seems like you're proposing monitoring and reporting for about over a period of about 18 months, which struck me as kind of short. And something you said tonight made me reinforce the idea with me that that's kind of not long enough. I don't, yeah, I don't think it was 18 months. I thought it was from it was the two spring. Years. It was two years? Yeah. I thought it but was it's from the three spring years. of. 16 to the fall of 17. Yeah, well, you see There's three monitoring periods, but it is over two years. We're going six months, 12 months, and then 24 okay. months. Okay, right? all right. So I'm sorry. That, but it is 24 months. Okay, all right, that's all. Mike. I, Mike. I actually want to follow up on Mary's question with that. Mark, is that, um, you've done replication before. How long do you usually monitor them for? Uh, two years is the Wellness Protection Act performance yeah. standard. How long does LNC generally monitor their well, our, our clients don't usually pay us to monitor. <laughs> <laughs> Much beyond that requirement. Okay, right. I just I was just asking. I keep an eye on them. What? I keep an eye on them. Okay, good. Okay. Right, Mike, did you have something? Um, the thermal well. Thermal. Is 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 the operation of that well going to impact your new well? I don't believe so. I believe it's so I mean, deep. Is it depth? Wind. You're gonna you're gonna get drawdown around that well. Oh, uh, no, that, that, no, that uh, that's a bedrock yeah. well. It's yeah. uh, over 1,600 foot deep. And it's screened in the rock. Yes, it's in the rock. Bingo. Okay, yeah. I'm happy. That's down deep. And is I it granite can, down there? I had a question. Mike, the uh, what's the I bedrock? Didn't I don't know. Ski pole. Right, Mary, um, go ahead. Geo, a question on the geothermal. Um, that's gonna be on a plan somewhere that we yeah. permitted that. I, yeah, that, that was discussed at the Tom was I familiar changed. with that. Yeah, we brought it up. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, it's probably in there. I, I don't know. You don't okay. have to, you don't have to I, I can look at the right files. Now. Yeah. Because I was just curious if believe me, you don't want to look at that. Stand over, Jamie, give it scale. That's I, all it right. could be in there more. Yeah, I mean only the only thing I is that perhaps at this point and maybe it exists in this vast pile of maps and old records and so forth but if i were going to be one who voted on this i would want to see a simple map or two maps with overlays that show one dealing with a compliance issue on 1886 or four whatever it is with this with the square footages of the buffers clearly laid out and then the second thing is the original wetlands restoration border that was agreed upon back in 2005 and the changes you're proposing to make so it's all in one place that even a child could understand <laughs> and then then and you know i'm serious because there has been so much i looked at some of the stuff you're showing and it's mind-boggling and i'm glad but i'm coming in i missed the first hearing and i might be mind boggled in that case i think we got it don't count on it I mean, I'm just trying to get it so it's simple and we can yeah, put it to bed. Two, two quick things. Yes, sir. I was here in 2005 What's when that? three of you were here, and we worked long and hard yes, for that we did. order. 
and it no, nothing happened for four years. I kept asking, what's happened? Well, they've never issued it. It, it, it. it went away, as far as we were concerned. And then it got sent, it actually was sent to another lawyer. It had been so long, it was involved with the thermo. Um, second, and most importantly, is we really would like to do the replication starting in the fall. We all know this is the best time to do it. So I know we're going to continue it. We're hoping we can come to a resolution on the enforcement so we can get doing that work yeah. right. in September yeah. and October. We are committed to do that. So I'm hoping, and I appreciate all the time that you've given us tonight, that when we come back in, that we can get that enforcement done so we can start that. I think that we're work. getting there. I really, yeah. I really yeah. do. I think I, we are, but I, I just wanted to add, no one had talked about the time constraint, yeah. and we, we really do need to do that starting you know, you know, in October. So that's a good time to do it, Mark, right, Mark? That's Make sure they got your message. We should be doing it. And As I, opposed to waiting more until more next year. And I agree. I, I, basically, that's why I was saying let's have a simple map that even a child could understand that some rates is the whole thing. We can look at it and bada bing, bada boom, and it's done. Mike, can you get that? And it's in the record for the future. Yeah, you have a record of it. Yeah. Mike, can you get that to us by the 16th? Yeah. We, we just don't meet on the 9th. I'm sorry. And you won't be able to get it to us for next week. Well, he couldn't get it for next week anyway. And they so. won't be able to absorb it for next week. So. All right. Okay. And can you look at that RAA area again, please, and see if we could move a little bit more of that wetland, restore some of that? I mean, if you only good. have the, you know. oh, God, I need my numbers. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'll, wait, be, I'll, I'll, I'll meet somebody else. There's more them. area than what you need. You know, I know. Right. Mark, how much, how much wetland, square foot wetland is up on the, uh, the north side of the okay. So we're going to go for the continuance here. Yeah. No, 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 all 160. Oh. I, I can't look at these numbers anymore. I'm sorry. Oh, wait, no, that's. Is there an area right here? Yes. Is there any way you could possibly. 10, 10, 80 versus. Thank you. Minus 80, 30. What, what do we say? 9 versus 3? Okay, is there any way you could possibly. Some of that to where Mr. Chairman is asking for it in the. Body, R-A-A-A. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's understood. Thank okay. you. Yeah, we're looking at that. Okay. Beautiful. Bye. I'll be happy to meet somebody that will walk with you on it. It was just, uh, I was really. It is a little, I was out there with um, the BLM and they were looking at that area and I asked them to come out and walk with me on it. Mike, and then we're going to move on. Yeah, we're we're going to move on, but yeah, you, when you're thing coming thing. back, That's hers. No, I this is all going to be resolved. Right. But, but one of the pieces that doesn't make any sense to me is why you're moving a road that's pretty stable onto an area that we know is filled. I mean, you're, you're, just, you're, you're just taking a problem and shoving it in the wrong direction when you could be taking a wetland and putting it into that area. It just, it just, Mike, this, this thing just makes no sense to me, and I know that's moving forward, but there we go. The, uh, I'm, glad you got, I'm glad you got that out, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, that was on so everybody's goes mind. here, and then it goes on to there. Be creative, that Mike. original driveway yeah. was yeah. built in a wetland. I understand, but do we know that there's heat under here. Yeah, now. I know that. I, I just thought, Are you asking for a continuance? Yes, I'm going to ask for a continuance. Freddie's going to answer there this we question. Go. But I thought I should answer the question. Long term, this has always been a place where there's pavement, um, it's crushed on on top of pavement, been coming up. So if you look at this, this is filled slightly over the existing grade in order to get a more stable base. You fill, it's, it's over P. You fill, uh, you, 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 you took fill and yeah, put it over the P, now you want to build a road over. Yeah. But Think about it, Mike, I, before you come back. That's, that's, yes, that's, I will address that. But that's going to come up in, in the, in no, the no, notice, no, correct? I, just, it, it, I will yeah. address no, it. I mean, you've asked the question that I I need to go dig a test. He could, he could do the whole wetland where it's supposed to be and that, just move the road a little bit. That, we wouldn't want that road to disappear on this, you, Mike. This is the original After it was road. built. That's what's there. This is what's <laughs> going there. So this part of the road is where they want to put it, where the old one was. Yeah, that was a good question, Mike. I think. Mm -hmm. 
Mike's going to think about it. I'm going to give you an answer. It's getting late. All right. Yeah. All, right. All, right. All right. I need a motion. Somebody want to make a motion? Move to continue the um, hearing on the enforcement order. To and the compliance. And, uh, and the compliance to September 16th. Second. Okay, so we got Mary and a second is Mike. Yep. Okay, any other questions on this? Comments? Everybody good? Okay. Yeah, we have to untangle. No, we haven't taken a vote yet. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to call for the vote. All those in favor of continuing the enforcement and compliance order, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Abstentions, unanimous, so moved. Good. Now, I will take a motion to untable the notice of intent. I make a motion to untable the notice of intent. Second. Now we need to yeah. continue that as well. Yes, continue that as well. Okay? So you need to vote and then give a Okay, so. I did. Mary. So we got Maury, Mary, and we're going to take a vote on untabling the notice of intent. 160. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. <coughs> Abstentions, unanimous, so moved. The notice is untaped. Okay, now we're going to end up. Would you like to request a continuance for the notice? Should we want to discuss the details? No. I don't know if we're going to. Well, my problem is, is. There might be changes to the plan. There might be but, All right. I understand that. There are some... That's why I had asked you to very clearly do it, because you need to figure out that, and then we can, they'll be, they'll, the board will be able to absorb the proposed project, the relocation of the driveway, I think, and all the different calculations, once they have it clear in their head where okay. the, the wetland is. I, I understand so, your enthusiasm to move forward at 20 after 10, but... He's tired too. Sure, sure. He's <laughs> tired too. He's just not going to admit it. <laughs> so I request a continuance until the last day, from the 16th. Of Thank the you. Thank you. So moved on behalf of the yeah. Oh, I thought we were right. No. Do I go I'll second? second it. I'll second it. Maury on the second. All those in favor of the continuance. Signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Abstentions, unanimous, so moved. Thank, Thank you, Mike. Well, Thank you. Thank you. Just to let yes. you know, we will be issuing some lines. I instructed my staff to do that on the other two. She kind of missed that on the agenda. So they do will be receiving them. Okay. Not a problem. All right. Board orders and conditions, 28 Pine Bank Road, North Falmouth. This was, I think we were all on the quorum on this. this yes, we're all on the quorum. The house in the dune with the bocce court in the dune. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't think, I think the, Mike came back with all yeah, the changes think, that yeah. we wanted on Mike the plan. Yes. Yeah. Everything that you guys wanted. Give me one second to hold up my hand on the paper. Okay. Good night. <laughs> so, so let's discuss some of the findings on that. Um, we determined that was all considered a doom. It's all doom. All, all doom. And Mike made the proper adjustments and gave us he a new did. plan for that. Yes, he did. Okay. Was there anything else? I have three items. Uh, I plan that the first floor allegations that the allegation units that are going underneath the deck have nowhere the existing septic is going to be. Oops, I'm sorry, Mary. No. Um, he made all the changes we asked him to. Yes, yeah. he did. Yeah. What? No, go on, okay. Mary. Just one. I uh, know. No, do you guys want a special? I just thought maybe we should mention what the changes on the plan are, so yeah. we're all in agreement that we the got findings. them all. That's yeah. all. <laughs> oh. So we we had the, the the finding of the it was he, all a doom. He put the first floor elevation on front. Right. Yeah. Um, the I, AC units and generators. Yeah, they went underneath the deck. Yep. Yeah. 
first floor elevation and the existing septic. Then he yeah. put the septic yeah. on right. the plan. Yeah. Can I just say that? I'm sorry. Yeah, no, you just all. said he did yeah. them all, and there was no way of knowing what you what oh, was that included when he said in that. We gave him an attaboy when he was here. Yes, we did. We gave him an attaboy because okay. it was all that we wanted. Yeah. Okay. It's probably late at night. Right. Anything else? Now is nope. late at night. Isn't Anything it? else on 28 <laughs> Pine Bank? You think we're good? All right, I'll take a motion. Let's discuss. Second. So we have a motion by, I forget Mary. Betsy's Betsy. name already. Mary and second by Betsy. Betsy and Her, second. the one to his right. Okay. Yeah. Any other comments or questions on 28 Pine Bank? Rain stream. All right, so I'm going to call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Abstentions unanimous, so moved. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. Unanimous, so moved.